episode 32 judged by 12 and carried by six <laughs> perfect title you gave for this episode uh, a lot of the stories going on right now with our people is one of the two one of the two either getting judged by 12 or carried by six so, so uh duke has decided to do some rebranding for the channel so i hope you enjoy uh the new tunes and uh the new look yeah we got a new look a good job we did a great job you're gonna see a new look coming up but i guess we should go ahead and start with an unfortunate story that happened earlier this week <sighs> the rapper whose real name is adolph robert thornton jr was reportedly buying cookies from medica's uh homemade butter cookies in memphis when someone drove up and shot him and shot him sad tragic very unfortunate story considering he was somebody who at least in memphis was highly respected by a lot of people um he was seen as i guess somebody i guess he's one of those guys who he got his wealth and fame he stayed and he tried to spread love now i don't know how much of a street nigga he was but you know because you have most uh, people lead the community and go off into gated communities. And, and that's the debate that started behind the story. Even Nipsey stayed, right? Yeah. That's the debate that started behind the story. You see, that's why they leave. That's why they should leave. Because, you know, they stay and niggas kill them. And you go, well. But um, there's a maybe we should, instead of asking the celebrities to leave, maybe we as a community, <laughs> not celebrities, people who do good for the community. It's not just people who are famous. There are people who aren't famous and have wealth back. and can give back. Yeah. So maybe instead of out being okay with those people leaving because of the stuff that's going on in the hood, maybe we should kick the people who are bringing drama to the hood out. And have a different mentality and mindset exactly. about how we how treat about, one another. How about the dude who's the people who are shooting people, the gang members? How about we kick them out? Isn't there a group in Detroit called the Detroit 300? It's a, a black man. Yeah. Who, getting the gang members and stuff, either you change or, or you, you get, get out. out. That's the type of mindset we need to have instead of, you know, when these things happen, see, that's why you should leave the hood. No, we should clean the hood. But yeah. Clean it up. Yeah. Get them out. But as you see here, a young dog, the rapper behind the album, like Rich Slave died in a fatal shooting in Memphis, Tennessee on Wednesday at the age of 36, according to Memphis police chief, uh, the rapper whose real name, we already went through that. The shooting is another example of census gun of violence. All, the state we are experiencing uh, locally and nationwide. Our hearts go out to the Thornton family and all who are affected by this horrific act of violence. No suspect information is available at the time, according to Davis. Yet it was too early to know what the motivation for, was for the killing. Well, we can't ignore that just a few years ago, he was shot at and wounded. He didn't die. If I'm not mistaken, he made a song called 100 Rounds because there was a 100 rounds shot at him and Damn. he lived. And what's funny is how everybody's sad when this happened. Oh, this is so tragic. Yet when that 100 Round song came out, when he was boasting about living, mm -hmm. everybody was making it a joke. Exactly. People was, oh, yo, God, he probably the one who sent the shooters. Or this person over here probably sent the shooters and they missed. And you go, this ain't funny. And that's why there was a guy that came into our conversation when we did the Astro World video. Yeah. Talking about how people are talking about rituals and all this bullshit. And then you still continue to support these artists. And you know that they're into some uh, demonic things. Yeah. So we do have to change our mentality, our mindset of what we choose to listen to and who we choose to support. Yeah, they went on a call for a curfew because, you know, when there's a shooting, especially considering how, like I said, considering he's somebody who's respected, it's probably going to be some get back. Yeah. As a matter of fact, the next day, if I'm not mistaken, <clears throat> there was a shooting at a family dollar or something across the street. From the cookie shop? Yeah, from the cookie shop. So, and the cookie shop is owned by a uh, black man and a black woman. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they named, they named the restaurant after a little girl who died of uh, leukemia. Okay, that's nice. Yeah. Support that business. Yeah, that's what people saying, like, because they had to shut down, like, you know, still order from them, sending money to help the building their business and stuff. Because he was known for patronizing them and helping them uh, grow and stuff like that. But That's good. Yeah, um... And this is the new setup <laughs> as you can see but the unfortunate part of the story is um he had a family he had a wife and kids <laughs> look 
We have to bring it up. He was one of the dudes who had an old school relationship. Yeah. He was with his woman for 10 years. They had kids together. He was black. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a thing, I guess. You have to mention it, I guess. But it's sad. I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to be funny or I'm just saying it's it's sad that, you know, and I'm not saying that there's plenty of black couples out here. Yeah. Plenty. I'm just saying you have to it's he so was building sad. wealth for yeah. a family. He was building wealth with a black woman. They had a black family, they had black kids. So you know that the money was staying in, in the community. community. That's and, all we're saying. And he was spending money in the community. And the black community. Yeah. So so it was just like, wow. Well, they did release uh, pictures of the alleged shooters here. Obviously, these were hitmen. Um, they wore the same thing, <laughs> gloves, mask on. So you can't tell, identify them in any way. Then if you want to go to, you know. Hey, we're going to get to that. Now. Well, we talked about a few weeks, a few, a little while ago, we talked about how we found out with the son's owner situation, his email has been released. We found out that owners will literally get a stripper or a prostitute or whatever you want to call them to get impregnated by the M- an NBA player so that the player will be more likely to sign with the team in that state because she's there and they yeah. want to be around the kid. Yeah. The- these corporations, the owners and stuff, they send their daughters. It, that's what I'm about to say. The producers and music industry yeah. they send their daughters to a person. They don't even know they can to them or niece oh, or something. Oh, especially the Jewish. <laughs> I'm gonna say, especially the Jews. <laughs> they'll send them to the to the dude and they'll, you know, seduce him. And next thing you know, he die and the royalties go money and go back to to the white community. And that's another thing. He owned his masters. He owned his master. So, if you, so all the people now who are going to stream his music, he his family is profiting off of it because he owned the master. Until the record company comes to them and, you know, we'll buy it off of you if the numbers get good enough. But I found out a lot of these people are signed to hmm. certain record labels. He's signed to Empire. Or at least he has a distribution deal with them. It's a rabbit hole, huh? So MO3, another guy who was killed from Texas, he signed with Empire. Or he has a deal with them one way or another. And you just go, a lot of these dudes are with these companies and they all kind of pyramid with each other. It's like it all leads back to a handful of companies. Yep. And they all typically, not always, they all typically own their masters. What happened to Michael Jackson? Yeah. Prince. What's, what's going on with R. Kelly right now? That's another thing. They saying Prince. Well, not my R. Kelly. <laughs> that was his son or something. I can't remember. Son or nephew or something that said that he was owed a billion dollars and that yeah. this is really over money. This and is this the guy is who owns Empire. This is the guy who owns it. Yeah. So I don't, I think he had a distribution deal with him. Now, if you go into a three dimensional thinking, you would say he died at 36. Yeah. That's three. And I'm just showing six. this picture to show that. Somebody was making a connection between all these dudes. King Von as well was with them. So so it's like, <laughs> if he pop up next, then yeah. But it's an unfortunate story. But like I said, the bigger thing here is not that you know people see the story. And I saw people, especially the black um, Republicans. Oh look, black on black crime. It's like I get it. We can discuss this as far as intercommunal violence that we deal with. And how to better but that love. that happens in every community. Exactly. How, how to better love and respect each other. But when you put the tagline on it, black and black violence, you make it seem like it's unique. It's not unique. It, it happens now, to every community. The numbers may be unique, but the act itself is not. The most polarizing story right now is a white kid killing two white men. And, and, and injuring one, right? Yeah. So it's like, that's not called white on white crime, though. Have you heard? Exactly. Have you heard him say white on white? Not, not once. They not don't once. Refer to that as white and white crime. It's just a ki- uh, it's a crime. It's a kid. Who or just it's not had... even a crime because we gonna we know he got off. It's not even a crime, but it's just an action. It's something that happened. It's not something that's put on the entire race. <laughs> it's no. just you know, but two people. When but when when uh, black Americans do it, it is considered yeah. black on black crime. It's black on black crime. Dude. But everybody else, it's just an isolated incident that yeah. happened. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. It's like just that. crazy how we're a monolith. We're all grouped, when, but everybody else is just seen as yeah. Individual. individuals in that instance yeah in that instance they're seen as individuals yeah it is what it is though so uh rest in peace to him uh it's an unfortunate situation hopefully his family 
get through it. His daughters, that's probably the worst part. Yeah, daughters. Hopefully, so. you know, record company don't come in and, yeah. you know, say. Gotta take everything. and Force them. They say ask or they, but we know what really happens. I hope he had a wheel. Well, you know, the wheel always, yeah, uh, they didn't write a wheel or the wheel. Dis- Aretha Franklin, remember, her her wheel disappeared. Prince's wheel yeah, Prince, yeah. disappeared. So every time there's a wheel, it just. Just goes somewhere. We don't know. We this, don't know what this, happened. This is the wheel it. we're gonna use. Where that wheel come from? Oh, this is the one. Oh, the wheel says he left it to the record company. Oh, he did this. His master. He did this one right before he died. Like what? <laughs> yeah, but yeah, unfortunately, sad. it is. But since we talked about it already, we're gonna go right into the cow Rittenhouse, the actor. Kyle Rittenhouse. So with this case right here, and it, are we really surprised? <laughs> No. Kyle Ritter has been found not guilty on all counts of the homicide trial. So let me get this I straight. I think Amazing Luke has won his bet because he betted that he hey, was going to get off. <laughs> and a lot of people was wondering, why are there so many black people involved, like, in, care about this case? We're going to get to why I think yeah, someone Because care. I said the same thing up until the last two days. I, I It finally came into... Well, I don't think most people even got that click together. I think it's just a narrative was spinning that they didn't even know was false. But First of all, this... Sorry about that. So in this case... Kyle Rittenhouse and his mother drove up to Kenosha. <laughs> she dropped him off. He had a assault rifle, I guess him and a friend. He in, he's in this riot or march, whatever you want to call it. It's chaos. He gets in, he's in, he ends up getting separated from a friend. Something happens. He leads to some shooting. He's getting chased. He shoots that guy. They chasing him because he shot somebody else. Apparently he shot somebody. Then he started walking away. He didn't run. I don't think he was walking away towards the police line. So the other guys are trying to stop him. Like, you just shot somebody. Stop him. So they start following him. Like, hey, get back here. He ends up falling to the ground, shooting the other one. But then there was another person that came up and did the drop kick. They found out who that was. We're going to talk about that. He ends oh, up, they call him uh, Jump Kick. The Jump Keeps. Kick Man. They wind up doing a... Uh, they He ended up killing two, injuring one. And the the stand, what he's standing on is, and his defense is, self-defense. Even though he went to another state to protect property, to protect property that wasn't his, when there was police officers already there, so he's a he's a vigilante. So it's okay. So the way they got around this was they, the the guys that was chasing him, one of them did have a gun. So at that point, it's no longer him being a vigilante; it's self defense. Self defense. So if that guy didn't have a gun, and say he had, if, if he didn't, he, if he had any weapon, he got with the skateboard. He shot him. So why is one considered self-defense and the other two not considered? Well, all uh, of them self-defense because okay. they had weapons. One had a skateboard. One had a gun. Uh, the other one, I don't know. Maybe he just, he said he tried to grab his gun from him when he first shot the other guy. So it's considered self-defense because even though he's there with a weapon to protect property that's not here, this vigilante, but because they, according to him, were the aggressors at first, it's no longer vigilante. It's always oh, self-defense. You know, they love having these little escape goat laws and stuff that they can jump into when needed to get well, themselves out of situations. Like I said, I didn't have no dog in this fight because... I didn't have a dog in the fight either because I kept saying, why are black people so invested in this case until we were like, oh... Yeah, it's connected to another case. Possibly, it's connected to another possibly, case. Possibly connected to another case. Let me show y'all this right here. This is the uh, article. It says, uh, attorneys for Travis and Michael... I'm oh, sorry, this is the wrong article. Hold on. Sorry about that. Kyle Rittenhouse is acquitted of all charges in the trial over killing two in Kenosha. Kyle Rittenhouse, the 18-year-old who fatally shot two people during the unrest last year in Kenosha, Wisconsin, has been acquitted of all charges in a criminal trial that divided the nation over questions about gun rights, violence, at racial justice protests, and vigilantism. It's, it's not, according to them, it's self-defense. The verdict delivered Friday follows a highly watched hot trial in which a prosecutor struggled to overcome Rittenhouse's claim that he acted in self-defense on the night of the shootings. He has a huge sense of relief of what the jury did to him today. He wishes none of uh, this would have ever happened. But as he what? said, as when he testified, <laughs> he did not start this. But he went there with a weapon. How can you say you wish this, if you would have stayed your ass at home, none of this would have never happened? Like I said, I don't have a dog in a fight, but that sounds like a crazy ass, he literally wanted this... <laughs> He wanted smoke. He went with a, he went to another state with a weapon. You, you are mean? how does a they, 
How this, does a mother take her 17 year old to another state to be a vigilante? Well, see, this is this is set a precedent to me because they threw out the gun charge. They threw it out immediately. They never charged the mother. Even though he's he's a minor, she dropped him off, and that's to be a seventeen year old can have a gun, have permit. Right. I don't know. They threw the game. They threw the, threw the gun charge out. So now you're telling me that I can leave my state and go to another state, and we're not talking about I'm going to a state. I'm traveling. I'm minding my business. Somebody tried to do something to me. I just so happen to have to shoot him. I can go to another state where there's civil unrest with a weapon, and wow. I can call call it self defense. Well, we know who, what certain people can do this. <laughs> like, I, I mean, okay, this is setting a, a a precedent to me. Like, it is what it is. Now, this is right here I want to talk about right here too. This is why I was asking the question: Why are black people so interested in this case? You see this right here. This woman here said, "I am highly educated and reasonably perceptive, and it was only today that I learned that Kyle Rittenhouse victims were white." My progressive bubble made it this seem like a very different case than it is. <laughs> so I'm wondering, are there black people that think he killed, he killed black two people? Two black people and injured one? Yeah, I think so. Because that's the only way cause because the that's fervor killed. people have for this is like, I mean, it's, it's good to pay attention to stuff that ain't got, they may not have direct impact to black people. Like right now as a black person, you should be paying attention to geopolitics. You should be paying attention to what's going on in Russia, Poland, uh, 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 Ukraine, the, the EU in general. You should be paying attention that possibly a war gonna start over there. The immigrant crisis they having over there. Yeah. You should be paying attention that China is shooting hypersonic missiles and stuff. Like you should be paying attention to Australia and how the lockdown. Yeah, the lockdown may be affecting the U.S. in the near future. How about Austria, who is locking down only non-vaccinated? Like you should pay attention to stuff that's going on in other countries because you know it's good to be aware. But I, I, I didn't realize there were people who thought. <laughs> That the quote unquote victims, because now we can't call them victims because he was found not guilty, that they were white. I think they thought it was black. Because they're I think their mind is conditioned into every time something every time happened, a white dude's on TV he, killing somebody. He killed a black a black uh person. Black man in particular. Yeah, that's yeah, pretty much, yeah. Gotta be honest. See this right here? This is why the riots happen, allegedly. Jacob Blake speaks to TMZ as jury deliberates Kyle Rittenhouse. This is before uh, this is before they knew the verdict. He said, I still feel very strongly if he were different ethnicity or people group, he'd be gone. It wouldn't be no, he's a hero. I agree. I agree with that. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I mean, it's true. That's kind of the truth. Well, let me show this. Here's a video of his interview that he did where he just gives his opinion on the situation. Jacob Blake, the man whose police shooting sparked the Kenosha protests where Rittenhouse shot three people, spoke to TMZ about this trial. Blake says that the case would be different if Rittenhouse wasn't white. Still feel very strongly if he was a different ethnicity uh, or people group. Yeah, he he'd be gone. It wouldn't be no, uh, he's a hero and this, that, and the third. They would have said that he was underage. He was, he traveled to a different state with a firearm that didn't belong to him. And you mentioned that you think race played a factor here. You know, how significant did it play a role? <sighs> he got high fives. You know, he was caught throwing up the uh, Aryan nation. The judge seems like he's he really likes the guy. I mean, honestly, the kid might not be a might not be a bad person. I'm not saying he's a bad person at all, but what he did, he shouldn't have been there. He shouldn't have been there. And honestly, I uh first of all wish the state had a wish. Of course, we can wish all day. I wish this didn't happen to me, but I also wish that it didn't escalate to the point where it caused a riot. I am not happy about that. You'll remember Blake was shot seven times by Kenosha police officer Rustin Chesky on August 23rd, 2020. Two days. But yeah, you get the point of that right there. And look, we got, when I saw the things on him, well, a connection, I'll say, it made me realize this stuff is just, <laughs> it's a rabbit hole. 
You think your mind. This stuff is insane, man. Now, watch this right here. Oh, I'm about to read this, shall I say? Let me get there. This is article right here. You see, it says, Girlfriend of Kyle Rittenhouse victim, Anthony Hoover, said <clears throat> she has a lot of sympathy for the team. Now, she go on, you know, say he's an idiot. He had no business out there, but he's a teen. He was just caught up in the wrong crowd, da, 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 all this stuff. But look at this right here. It says, on the night of the fatal encounter, getting said she had gone to the protest with Herber, who was a friend of Jacob Blake, the man whose police shooting provoked the riot. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Is everybody a communist and a... Is everybody a damn communist and a uh, Marxist? So you mean to tell me the per the person who was shot at the protest for Jacob Blake, was it one of them, just so happened to be a friend of Jacob Blake, who was killed, quote unquote. No, Jacob Blake wasn't killed. Not Jacob Blake, his friend. Oh, his friend was killed. So you quote unquote allegedly. Listen, y'all can call me conspiracists all you want to. It's a lot of communists. I find it very strange that. One another. I'm a, I'm gonna I'm be a, I'm gonna go uh, Alex Jones on you. Is this a hoax? No, nah, so this is what you still you go off the deep end. You believe nobody died, and that's I don't thing. believe nobody dies. What I'm saying is this is absolutely this is very strange. And people say, well, people know any everybody. It's a you know it's Wisconsin, but but no, <laughs> it don't work like that. No, nah, um, I do think it's it's just very, yeah. The fact that he knew him just put two and two shot. together. That's all I can say. <laughs> Do your research, people. There was also a situation in this <clears throat> where the judge allowed him to pick his own um pick his own, own jury, uh, his jury. jury. To decide, it was a raffle drawn. Decided. And people were up and on about it, like, what the hell? Well, I'm gonna show that and show his response to why he allowed it. But his response to why he allowed it, it's just like it just shows that everything revolves around the demise of the black man. Just watch this shit. No, just uh, separate them. And... and the names which are drawn out will be the jury who will be uh, dismissed. No, just uh, separate them. And so you see with that, that put a lot of people, <laughs> had a lot of people pissed off. Was it only 12 pieces of paper in the box? So then the judge uh, later on the next day when people were, because the internet was talking about it, he went on to explain why he did that. Let me show you all that here. As long as I'm talking about it, I guess I'm going to talk about that too. The um, business about people not being identified as victims. How would you like to be put on trial for a crime? And the judge introduced the case to the jury by introducing you as the defendant and the person who is accusing you as the victim. And then throughout the trial, have all the references to um, the um, complaining witness as being the victim. Is it so difficult to just use the term complaining witness instead of prejudging what the jury is here to determine as to whether there's a victim and, and uh, whether there was a crime committed? So I don't know what the, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that comment at that. And then finally, I'm now reading about how bizarre and unusual it was to have the defendant pick the um, numbers out of the tumbler yesterday and I would admit that I don't know that there's a, a large number of courts that do that maybe not any uh, it, I do it because of an incident that I had in a case I tried in Racine oh I'm gonna say I, I estimated 20 years ago it could have been less than that it could have been more 
but um, it was a it was a big case. I think it was a murder case, but I'm not sure. Um, and there were there was a black defendant, and there were uh, 13 jurors, one of whom was black. And when the um, clerk, the clerk, the government official, drew the name out of the tumbler, it was a black, the black, the only black. There was nothing wrong with it. It was all okay. But what do they talk about? Optics nowadays? Is that the word for things? That was a bad optic, I thought. I think people feel better when they have control. So ever since that case, I have, uh, which was, well, ever since that case, I, uh, I've had an almost universal policy of having the defendant do the things. But what do they talk about? Optics nowadays? Is that the word for things? was a bad optic, I thought. I think people feel better when they have control. So ever since that case, I have, uh, which was, well, ever since that case, I, uh, I've had an almost universal policy of having the defendant do the picks. Well, it had nothing to do with anybody's race or anything like that. And when the um, clerk, the clerk, the government official drew the name out of the tumbler. It was a blank, the blank, the only blank. There was nothing wrong with it. It was all okay. But what do they talk about? Optics. <laughs> so as you can see, it was a black man's <laughs> example as to why he allows people to pick their. Sound like you had Devin ready to go in the chamber. Oh, it just I I I started this because of a black suspect. You know. I want to be fair to him. <laughs> it's a little too late to be fair to his ass. I want to be fair to him. So, you know, <laughs> another thing that happened was <laughs> MSNBC, MSNBC news producer, got, they, MSNBC got banned from the case because they allegedly had somebody following the damn jury bus trying to get their identity. <laughs> <laughs> These people get crazy. He got off, but still, they was doing, they, they was doing some weird shady shit. Like why are you have reporters or producer or whatever following the jury bus trying to get in you can't do identification that identification of some of the people that's crazy that was just crazy to me but wow i guess you were here to judge in the kyle, kyle rittenhouse trial bans msnbc uh, msnbc news from the courthouse <laughs> but the next topic defense attorneys rest their cases at ahmad Aubrey's death trial. Mm. Travis McMichael said at the murder trial on Thursday that he misspoke to police in the hours after fatally shooting Ahmad Aubrey. Mm. Now, in this case, this is why the two, this is kind of why people were making it kind of focusing on, I don't know if this is why, but this is why you should have possibly, this could have been a reason why you paid a little bit of attention to the Kyle Rittenhouse case. This is so why that was I did. a case that some people call it a vigilante case. This is a vigilante case, but can he not use the same argument that he tried to grab my gun? So at that point it became self-defense. Exactly. Like. Exactly. That, that you allow Cal Rittenhouse to use that. So I'm wondering, because these charges are right behind each other. They just found him not guilty. If you're this McMichael dude, you're looking like, well, I'm going to get off too. I have to get off. He tried to grab my gun. It don't matter if I was following him. At that point when he tried to grab his gun, became self-defense. Self-defense. Even though the reason why he grabbed your gun because you keep chasing him, so he finally just said, I, I can't keep running. I can't keep running. I got to fight now. I'm going to at least try to get a weapon, something. I'm, I'm, bare, I'm bare out here. I ain't got no weapon on me. Can McMichael not use that now? His, de his defense attorney, hey, look, there's a precedent being set that if somebody tried to grab your weapon, even if you are the person who has the gun, once they touch your weapon, and you the one who introduced yourself into the scenario. Once they touch, once they touch your weapon or become a threat to you, it's now self defense. Just saying, it seems like it can be used for them at this point. You see this right here. Uh, they do, they rest their case. Defense attorney arrested their case in the Mar Aubrey trial Thursday after just uh, calling just uh, seven witnesses, including the shooter, who testified that Amari did not threaten him in any way before he pointed his shotgun at the twenty five year old black man. Now, he admitted Ahmaud Arbery didn't threaten him before the confrontation. But he then could say, well, no, he didn't threaten me. 
But when I got out of my vehicle, he approached me and touched my gun. That's self-defense now. It's not vigilante. Listen. I hope not. But that Kyle Rittenhouse case just showed me what could happen here. Exactly. And they're already talking about how they're preparing for there to be uh, riots. They after better. The ver- after the verdict. So... First of all, the state has. I got a video I want to show of the uh, of him being on the stand. He testified in his own trial. I'm gonna show y'all what he had to say. It, it should be an open shut case, but like I said, now it's not an open shut case. It's a crack now. It's a crack in the door. But let's see what he had to say. That's why they did this shit. And at this point in time, when you first see him on Burford, he's not reaching into his pockets. Run, no mail. Not running. No mail. And he never. Yelled at you guys? No, ma'am. Never threatened you at all? No, ma'am. Not Never verbal. brandished any weapons? Sorry, Your Honor, he's trying to finish his answer. Yeah, he did not threaten me verbally. No, ma'am. All right. Didn't brandish any weapons? Uh, no, ma'am. Didn't pull out any guns? No, ma'am. Didn't pull out any knife? No, ma'am. Never reached for anything, did he? Uh, no. He just ran. Yes, he was just running. <clears throat> so you're telling this jury that a man who has spent five minutes running away from you, you're now thinking is somehow going to want to continue to engage with you, someone with a shotgun, and your father, a man who's just said, stop or I'll blow your fucking head off by trying to get in their truck? That's what it shows, yes ma'am. She said we've had a lot of trouble with thieves, it just worries me because my daddy is slap old crazy, LOL. He's old as dirt and doesn't care about jail. And you responded, that's what this world needs more of. My old man is the same way. I did say that, yes, ma'am. And then the next line is, you said, hell, I'm getting that way. I did say that. She said, have to make an example out of somebody. You said, that's right. Hope y'all catch the vermin, correct? I did. And at this point in time... So... Only thing he did was have black skin. What what are we talking about? Now, when you look up this case, according to him, he he saw him creeping in the shadows. A spook. He, yeah, he was a spook. He was a spook. He was creeping in the shadows, and he thought he was a burglar. So he and his father decided to go and get him. They did not. He lied and said he called the officers at the place, but then he admitted they did not call the cops. They never called the cops. So what were they gonna really gonna do? And if they didn't shoot, what were they really gonna do? They didn't call the cops, but you was chasing them with a shotgun. But you didn't see him have any. He didn't have anything on him. So what did he steal? He was attempting to be a burglar, <laughs> he was, or he saw you guys and then it, it startled him and then he started to run. Or it, it makes no sense. Y'all just wanted to. They just wanted to go kill a nigga. They just wanted to kill this black man. Let me show y'all another video. Where in this next video, they were discussing discussing the fact, because you remember when this first happened, <clears throat> the dude who was recording told the officers that after he shot him, he stood over and said, effing N-word. So now his lawyer don't want that to be part of the thing. He don't even want to be asked about. He said, because the only person that could verify it is that man and he's not going to be um he's not going to the uh stand there's no point in asking that question we don't want to damage his character but y'all Basically, damage said, everybody else's character what he's saying is we don't want that question because you asked the question did you say this mm. he's going to say no but it doesn't matter because the question being asked is already going to influence people's opinion of him so the, the lawyer's trying to say but don't even let this question be asked because it can influence but it's okay for the media to damage the victim's image. They like him. they have that video of Amar Aubrey being in a park and a police officer is yeah. talking to him and it makes it seem like he's this crazy uh, loony guy. He's this mental person. But yeah. y'all get to put out that type of information. Exactly. But watch this video here. First of all, the state had alluded earlier in the course of the trial that they intended to ask Mr. McMichael whether or not he said the expletive over uh, Mr. Arbery's body. 
the state must have a good faith basis to ask that question that that actually could be evidence in the trial. Um, if the court recalls, that was a statement made by Agent Dial during the preliminary hearing about where that who said it. Um, and I understand the only person that heard it the only, would have been the co-defendant. The only person that heard it had been the co-defendant, and so it's my understanding the co-defendant is not testifying. There is no basis then to try to get the statement in. And so for that reason, there's no good faith basis to ask the question. It's just going to inject that issue, which is currently not in the case. Uh, and so, so this is something that we're asking the court to limit the state from even asking the question. I certainly know what the answer will be, but um, I think it's even going beyond what the state could say is a good faith basis for asking the question because the only place it comes from is from Mr. Bryan. <laughs> so we should admit this statement because it's going to make your client look guilty. Guilty. So like That's what you're saying. Like when Renan, uh, like the, uh, the Kyle guy, they were like, uh, what did they say? They didn't want Jesse Jackson and uh, oh, Al yeah. Sharpton this, no, this there. The same, this is the same people. The same lawyer who said he didn't want uh, Jesse, Jesse Jackson, Jackson and, and Al Sharpton at the... Uh, <laughs> and let me say this. In the court because they didn't want them there to, you know, persuade the... No, they didn't want them there to try to uh, bully no, no, the jury. No. They said they were influencing... The jury. Opinion. Yeah. Opinion. But listen. They were bullying them. That's what they said. Let me say this. Don't nobody care about no messy Jesse or no CIA Al Sharpton. <laughs> but... That was insane for him to say out loud. We don't want the black. He literally said black pastors. We don't want them here. <laughs> it was like, what the fuck? Yeah. And didn't hold back. Hey, I don't blame him. You, you defending somebody, you got to be cutthroat. You got to say everything that he can't say. You got to find every new Shit, cranny. I'm not going to say I don't blame him. <laughs> but look at this article right here. Might I be accused of killer wants to exclude racial slur legend use. Uh, will, uh, while standing over body. The man who recorded a fatal shooting told investigators Travis McMichael called Ar Ahmaud Aubrey a racial slur, something his attorney don't want jurors to hear. Should he been asked that when he was on the stand? Who? Oh, it wasn't, it oh, wasn't him. Yeah, it yeah. ain't him. It's the, oh, okay. It's that the guy, one. one of them, uh, we'll get to that. Attorneys for Travis McMichael have asked the judge to block any testimony about the defendant's alleged use of racial slur at the Ahmaud Aubrey's killing. Co defendant. And for Sick of these damn pop ups. My bad. Attorney for Travis and Michael have asked the judge to block any testimony that the defendant's alleged use of wretched slur at the Ahmaud Arby's killing. Co-defendant William, William Rody O'Brien told investigators that McMichael uttered the slur while standing over Arby's body immediately after the shooting. Defense attorney Jason uh, Sheffield said that because Brian is the only witness to the alleged unutterance, uh, that because he believes and because he believes that Brian is not going to take the stand, there will be no good faith reason to introduce it. Sheffield also objected in advance to an attempt to prosecutors to introduce racial incendiary statements found in McMichael's text messages and social media posts. So wait, you don't want me to bring up what he possibly said over his body after he killed him or use his social media to define his character. But you do it with black people all the time. <laughs> Sheffield uh, said that because the defense did not elicit any character evidence from McMichael during the direct examination, it could not be introduced as rebuttal during prosecution cross-examination. Both allegations of the alleged racist language came out of a probable cause hearing in June 2020. Prosecutors had at the time, uh, at the time cited a text message from Michael to a friend using a slur for black people referring to a crackhead with gold teeth. They also cited a comment by Michael posted on Facebook in which he wrote Sayonara along with defensive terms of agents allowed, followed by expo expletive. GBI agent Richard Dow, Dow, I know that name, testifies at the hearing that Brian told him that Michael used a slur the day of the shooting. <laughs> so you just can't bring it up though. <laughs> hey, like I said, I hope not. But damn it, his, 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 if they were a lit, they're going to use self-defense now. They're going to say, look, he touched his gun. Thanks to, um, Mr. Kyle. <laughs> Look at this right here. Pressed by a prosecutor about inconsistencies in his testimony, Travis and Michael said at his murder trial on Thursday that he misspoke to police in the hours after fatally shooting Mount Arbor, a black man who ran Bobby Michael's home in Georgia. McMichael, one of the three white men on the trial for Aubrey's, uh, Aubrey's death, had told a jury a day earlier that 
Aubrey was grabbing his shotgun at the end of the five minute chase. See, so he fired in self defense. On Thursday, he conceded that the, he told police that day that he could not say for sure whether Aubrey actually grabbed it. The defense team rested their case on Thursday, and jurors were told to return on Monday morning for closing arguments. McMichael said the accounts have gave he gave of the shooting to police initially were choppy because he was nervous and under stress. He at the time and spoke to police said or had it wrong, and his statements made soon after the shooting on February twenty third, twenty twenty. Uh, I'm just, I just killed a man. He said, I have blood on me still. It's the most traumatic event of my life. Prosecutors and relatives of, say, Aubrey was an avid runner jogging in the neighborhood a couple miles from his home outside of uh, Glen County Superior Court building. Hundreds of black uh, pastors assembled for around, uh, from around the country to offer prayer for Aubrey and his family. So after he told them he don't want no pastors there, they go get, <laughs> they go get pastors from all around the country. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they come there just to taunt him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. After that, the defense they just gave Kyle Rittenhouse. You know, the shit is really sad. The only shaky thing is, like he said, he said he don't remember if he actually grabbed it or not. But you he know, would have never grabbed it if, sir, if he wouldn't have been following him. Exactly. If you weren't following him, you none of this would happen. But you know. what gives y'all the right to feel like y'all can go around and policing people? Who the fuck are y'all? Hey, man. But you know what? That's why when I run, I stay in my area. <laughs> I don't go into... Listen, I don't take no trails. I stay on the main road so people can see my black ass <laughs> when I'm running. And I want there to be no confusion of anything. Yo, everybody see me. You know I'm running. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's yeah. sad you got to be like that. It's some, it's sad that you have to have a mentality where you, you can't do what white people do. You can't run in trails and be behind. No, you can't do that. You got to stay on the main road so people see you. Either, either. That's called having a... <sighs> I'm looking for a word. That's, well, that's why the name of the show. Black man do those things. He either get judged by 12 or he gets carried by 6. Because anything happened, he was in the area, and we blamed on him. It is what it is. Next up. Manhattan District Attorney lawyer and lawyers for the two men said rewriting the official history of one of the most notorious murders of the civil rights era. This story, I, I read this article is long. I even Very went, long. I went and found other articles. I read them. I went back and found some other stuff and read that. Because I already know a little bit about this. Everybody knew that it didn't go down the way he said it went down. But this kind of opens this up to a point where it's like, okay, they're doing out in the open now. You're admitting it. You have to admit it at this point. More stuff is being unveiled. So now you're admitting that the two of the three men charged were one of the men who, uh, Played guilty said the other two dudes had nothing to do with it, but they still decided to arrest them, which means they chose them as spooks. Exactly, they chose to arrest them. They arrested them both five days apart. Like, come on, they they literally were finding people that they felt like would be, eh, we can we can do this to them. I ain't gonna go as far as call them patsies, but you know, they felt like we can use them for this. I can imagine. First off, they did a prison time. But then your image, your name, is a, is connected to the murder of Malcolm X. That got to be. Even when you get out. Even when you get out, it's like you people, just. You don't going to have those people that still believe that they did it. Yeah, yeah, you son of a. Just like the dude, um, what's his name? Um, uh, the dude who killed Fred uh, Hampton. He ended up hanging himself. I mean, he didn't kill him, but he set him up. He was a, you know, spy on them. He oh, ended up killing himself. yeah. Because he defended it, he did an interview about it. He just tried to stand on it, but then he ended up hanging. He ended up killing himself because he felt like he was an absolute Judas, and it was out in the open. You betrayed him. And I'm pretty sure he got so much he couldn't walk around the streets. People saw him and was like, "Ain't that that dude?" <laughs> yep. And you know, the pressure got too much for him. But uh, this article, like I said, this article is pretty long. 
I'm not gonna read the whole thing. I'm gonna jump. Bill O'Neill. Yeah, 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 yeah. What's his name? Bill O'Neill. Bill O'Neill. Yeah. I'm not gonna read the whole thing. It's gonna jump through it. Two of the men found guilty of the assassination of Malcolm X are expected to have their convictions thrown out on Thursday. The Manhattan District Attorney and lawyer of the 42 men said, rewriting the official story of one of the most notorious murders in the civil rights era. For decades, historians have cast doubt on the case against the two men, Muhammad uh, and Khalil, who each spent more than 20 years in prison. Their exoneration represents a remarkable acknowledgement of grave errors made in the case towering importance. In 1965, murder of one of America's most influential black leaders is long overdue, said Brian uh, Stevenson, a civil rights lawyer and founder of the Equal Justice Initiative. This is one of the most prominent figures of the 20th century, who commanded enormous attention and respect, and yet our system failed. A 22-month investigation conducted jointly by the Manhattan District Attorney's Office and lawyers for the two men found that prosecutors and two of the nation's premier law enforcement agencies, the FBI and the New York Police Department, the NYPD, come on, <laughs> had withheld key evidence that it had been turned over would likely have led to the man's acquittal. The two men, known at the time of the killing as Norman 3X Butler and uh, Thomas 15X Tom Johnson, spent decades in prison for the murder, which took place on February 21st, 1965, where three men opened fire inside a crowded ballroom in Manhattan as Malcolm X was speaking, starting to speak. But the case against them was questionable from the onset, outset, and in the decades since, historians and amateur investigators have raised, raised doubts about the official story. I'm going to jump down right here. The assassination unfolded on a bright February day at the dawn of what was to be a new phase of Malcolm X's career as a civil rights leader. He had introduced himself as the American politics, uh, public six, uh, he had introduced himself to the American public six years earlier, a Nebraska born street hustler turned minister speaking forcefully in behalf on behalf of the nation of Islam, a black nationalist group about the way uh, white authorities abused their power and brutalized black people. Some of his ideas espoused during this time, his time in the nation of Islam, he called white people devils and advocated racial separatism. Now, this is what I noticed too. A lot of people who use Malcolm X quotes, they would not agree with him. Malcolm X is more popular now amongst black people than he was when he was alive. Yep. <laughs> That's the crazy part. How they take you and whitewash you. And now I'm dead. And Even Muhammad Ali. Even Muhammad Ali. A lot of people, and I want to say black Martin Luther King too. I want to say black people with those two. I think okay. black people like love Muhammad Ali and Martin Luther King, but the love that these people get, they didn't get when they was alive. None of them. They got hatred. They got death threats. Why do you think they walked around with security guards and stuff? Like, Don't get it until you're dead and gone. Yeah. They don't give you flowers until you're not here well, to receive them. Well, take your name and use it to control black people. So now they'll take quotes from, Muhammad, I mean, from Malcolm X or uh, to demean black men in particular. They'll take quotes from uh, Martin Luther King to, oh, peace. And love. Love. Just nah, character. Nah, nigga, what about that burning house? Burning, uh, yeah, you don't want to talk about that speech. The burning house, damn quote. Yeah, some of his ideas aspired during his time in the Brass, um, nation of Islam, he called white people devils and advocated racial separatism. We're outside of the mainstream, even by today's standards. Exactly. There's a lot of people that, if Malcolm X was alive now, in, in today's climate, climate, they would say, I disagree. They would call him Dr. Umar Johnson. <laughs> That's what's funny. They would turn him into Dr. Umar Johnson. Because he would say black man with a black woman. Or a black woman with a white man. What? I'm just comparing the two, dude. Calm no, down. No, no, no. I said, I think you, you, I don't think you hear what I said. I said he would be saying black man with black woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then he said white, black woman with white man. <laughs> what the hell? I thought you said a black man with a white woman. Sorry. No, I said black man with black woman. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's why I look at like, What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> but, uh, uh, well, let's see. Um, which uh, which was then almost wholly white portrayed Malcolm X as a racist and dangerous agitator and referred to the nation of Islam as a nation as a cult. But he was uh, also a person intense uh, with of intense fascination and fiery or uh, persuasion speak persuasive speaker who voiced ideas that many Americans had never heard before. And in 1965, a year after having let the, left the nation nation of Islam, he was beginning to define the mission of a new group. Listen to this. And the organization of the Afro-American unity. They don't sound like pan-Africanism. The subject of his planned speech at the ballroom. But shortly after this, he began to speak, he was attacked by three gunmen who rushed the stage, firing at him in front of a pregnant, a pre his pregnant wife and three of his daughters and killing them, him. He was 39. 
Sounds like to me they didn't want that Afro American Unity uh, organization to get up off its. Oh no, Mr. Helene, then known as uh, Tom Hayer, among other names, was of apprehended in the ballroom. Now he was arrested. This is the guy who confessed. He was arrested in the ballroom at the shoot. He was arrested there on the spot. Cause he, I think he said he was shot. He was clipped. Okay. Uh, he was shot in the thigh. Mr. Aziz, then known as Norman, was arrested five days later. And Mr. Islam, known as Thomas, another five days after that. Within a week, the three men, all members of the nation of Islam, have been charged with murder. At the trial of 1966, prosecutor cast Mr. Islam, who was once Malcolm X's driver, as the assassin who fired the fatal sh uh, shotgun blast. Mr. Halim Aziz were said to have followed close behind firing those pistol, their pistols. Ten eyewitnesses said they had seen Mr. Islam, Mr. Z, or both. But the witnesses' statements were contradictory, and no physical evidence tied Mr. Mr. Z or Mr. Islam to the murder or even the crime scene. Both men offered credible alibis, which were backed by testimony from their spouses, friends, and others. Wow. Now, when you go into this article, they're going to tell you there were undercover cops in the, in the room. We're not surprised at all. <laughs> there were undercover officers in the room. So, and they already knew there were death threats because his house got firebombed. They already knew he was, so what the hell were the cops doing? Making sure the mission was carried out. So it seems like to me, we've seen this before. I'm going to show y'all an example of them doing this before. They knew Malcolm X had beef with the Nation of Islam and that he was in danger. So they said, we're going to let things play out. We're not going to touch nothing. We're going to antagonize a little bit on both sides, do some things and make them think that they did it to each other. And we're going to step back and let nature handle it. And you'll see that that's been done before. <laughs> some wicked people. They were there to make sure the mission was carried out. A hundred percent. They were there to make sure it happened. So Malcolm, so another case, the reason why I brought up, brought up the uh, idea of the cops being there, they're known for antagonizing groups of black people back in the sixties, especially during Quintel Pro, especially the black Panthers. They would, they would take groups that oppose them, antagonize and let them fight each other and kill each other. Mm. Sometimes they would obviously act like they're part of one of the groups and kill somebody. Like how these people be fun in both sides of the war. Yeah. So y'all two going to fight. We're going to let it happen, but we're going to make sure it go to the highest level. We're not going to let y'all bicker. We're going to make sure y'all have a war so that we can eliminate both of you. Two birds, one stone. Exactly. This here, Malcolm X's confessed killer expressed support for exoneration. So this is the guy who admitted that he did it and he support the guys getting off because he said they're innocent. A man answering the name uh, Helene responded to the exoneration of two men convicted alongside him in 1966 for Malcolm X's murder with the relieved benediction delivered quietly through a closed door. God bless you. They exonerated. The man said in response to the reporter's questions on Wednesday after Muhammad, uh, Manhattan district attorney, uh, Cyrus R. Vance Jr. Acknowledged that Muhammad a Aziz and Khalil did not get their fair trial. Mr. Vance plans to actually just to vacate their convictions on Thursday. So he went through this article if you go through this article, I'm going to put it in there. And he explains that there was another guy named Green. Last name Green. He was a short. The description of the killer who shot the shotgun was short, stocky, dark skin. But the guy they, they put in place to say he's the one to fire the shotgun was light skin, <laughs> slim. <laughs> he was light skin, slim dude. Fit, didn't fit the description at Completely all. Completely opposite. So they just wanted to have a body. So they just threw it on somebody. Yep. It, the, the, How many times in history have they done that? When we see this stuff happen, we, do we even get as angry as we should? It's sad. You, you become a norm. Norm. It's becoming a normal. Because it's so like you get used to it. It's like historically they've done this to you, and when it comes out, or when it's validated at least, because you already know historically and present. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, we knew. And you kind of just move on. You have to wait. Did they decide to unveil and tell you the truth? <laughs> yeah, you gotta wait for them to validate. No, you know the truth. You have like, to wait for them to validate it. There's another story they're gonna have you waiting for a long time to unveil the truth later on in the podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, it's unfortunate. But I want to show also. This is not to be mean anything, but I want to see. I want to show you the guy who admitted that he was in one of the guys that killed Malcolm X. I want to show you his reaction to the whole situation as far as his own situation. What he feel is justice for him or whatever. Let me show you all this. You see here, this is, this is Hagen. This is the guy who actually admitted who confessed to doing it. He said, Hagen has been denied parole 13 times for the past 19 years. However, he has served his time under the work release program, spending just two nights a week in a Lincoln Correctional Facility a minimum security uh, center overlooking Central Park on West 110th Street and Malcolm X Boulevard. <laughs> Years in prison have Melo Hagan's anger and allegiance to the Friends group. He told the Post in an exclusive interview last week. While still a practicing Muslim, he has parted ways with the Nation of Islam. It wasn't really a correct ideology. There are a lot of misconceptions. Likewise, he now apologizes for shooting the black leader. I've expressed my regrets and sorrow. He said though he never apologized personally to Malcolm X's family. Hagen filed a lawsuit in April 20, um, 24. This, this article was written in 2008, by the way. Challenging New York Parole Board, Board's most recent decision. I've been incarcerated for 40 years, and I've had a good re record all around, Hagen said. I don't see any reason for holding me. I think, it, I, think I deserve it. Comparatively to guys who are in and out of, <laughs> comparatively to guys who are in and out and in and out of the system. When reached by phone, one of Malcolm X's daughter, uh, uh, you know how I said her name? Shabazz, Jamaya, Jamalia? Yeah. Jamala Shabazz. Okay, uh, does, declined to comment on whether she would like to see Hagen get full parole. She said, it's not my life. What's done is done. Let the chips lie where they fall. Now, <laughs> this next guy kind of kind of crazy. While inside, Hagen earned a bachelor's and a master's degree under work release and has held jobs at has held jobs at the Crown Heights Youth Collective or whatever, whatever, whatever. Hagen says he shuns publicity so as not to look like he's capitalizing on his infamy. He said he has no interest in writing a book, unlike Khalil Islam, who is currently working on the memoir. I would like to think that people have grown, have more understanding and insight. Why shouldn't he have full parole, said Islam. How long is it going to go on? He didn't kill the Pope. I don't understand it, to tell you the truth. So hold on, hold on, hold on. Y'all seen oh, this man? Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so this black man said, "Why he in jail still? He ain't kill a white man." Exactly. He didn't kill the pope. He ain't kill a white man. Who the fuck? He killed a nigga. Like who is the who the fuck is the pope? So a man who was I, as I, influential as the pope to your community, mm, he's you. He's still in prison. He ain't kill the pope. He ain't kill a white dude. Our uncle has a saying for the pope. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow like, you know what that just shows you how we view our that, lives when i saw that i just thought wow he was just like, like he ain't killed the pope you killed the person yeah, you're supposed to be serving a life sentence no righteousness would you be you know yeah you be kind of taken out as well but but for some reason, system it's at least life but you're like he ain't killed the pope i just found so that, that that still means that you didn't value him as a person well that's the islam dude he got that's the dude who didn't kill him he, just, That's got, what I'm he just got exonerated, but he's like, he didn't kill the Pope. I wonder because he wasn't the one who killed my mom, Malcolm X, but he was convicted of it. Do he had, do he hold any resentment to Malcolm X? Like I didn't even do it. And I'm in prison because of you. So maybe that's why he had comments like that because he has resentment towards them, even though, you know, you should have the resentment towards the people that actually killed them. Because I know, the people who killed happen. them is the reason why you, what happened? What happened to you? Not Malcolm X. Yeah, the, the human brain, though. You know, people. We got to change that thinking, though. People, people assign guilt in certain situations to where they shouldn't assign it. So it happened. But <laughs> another thing I want to show y'all. <laughs> I want to compare this to a story that happened to the Black Panthers. Now, there was a man named. John Huggins and Bunchy Carter. I'm sure you heard of. Them. Now these men were Black Panther Party leaders in South California. If you see this, this these are the men. They were assassinated. 
but they were assassinated from a <laughs> they were assassinated by a man who was a part of a group the man who ran that group that killed these two men guess who it was who the guy who started kwanzaa the guy who created the holiday kwanzaa is the one who killed these dudes but he was a part of a group that the cia was manipulating this group and the other remember he's turning to informant remember he also has ties to uh what's that guy name when we're talking about polite ah what's the guy name uh the one who um the one who what jesus christ not no detail uh, african bimbada the other dude that's not hassan the guy who allegedly had all these relationships with children he got he in prison now they call him a cult leader we did a video on this polite connection polite um <sighs> it don't matter the point is that dude <laughs> who had connections to that dude he also is the one who killed them and i'm gonna show y'all how the cia used them against each other dr york yeah that's his name dr york but back to this i'm gonna read this to you let me show y'all this the federal bureau of investigation carried out secret nationwide efforts to destroy the black panthers including attempts to stir bloody gang warfare between the panthers and other groups to create uh, a factional splits within the party according to the staff reports of the senate select committee on intelligence activities the Bureau's efforts called part of the Cointel and counterintelligence program contributed to the climate of violence in which four black Panthers were shot to death, the report say, and uh, I'm going to skip that. Besides the four deaths of black Panthers mentioned in the Senate committee report, the independent police and Panther sources said there have been two other slayings of Panthers in an intra-party rivalry in New York City. After a series of clashes between the Panthers and Ron Karinga's U.S. group, U.S. stood for United Slaves. That's the name of the uh, group, U.S. group, Ron Karingas. He called mm -hmm. himself United Slaves. In Southern California, which resulted in three deaths, one more would follow. The San Diego FBI office sent to headquarters a message that would report, says, point with pride to the violent saying, shooting beatings and high degree of unrest continues to prevail in the ghetto area of Southeast San Diego. Although no specific counterintelligence actually can be credited with contributing to this overall situation, it has felt like a substantial amount of unrest and directly attributable to this program. So they're admitting their activities is leading to the rift between these two groups and they wound up getting two men killed and that guy went on to create Kwanzaa and allegedly has ties to the FBI and stuff and CIA. He's an agent. So they had an inside agent. <laughs> and every it seems like in every organization they have an inside agent. Oh, like yeah. that Bill O. O'Neill dude. Yeah, yeah. He was an inside agent. When they have to. The kind of the part of the situation. There's a Judas. Yeah, you got to have a Judas to be able to give you information that you wouldn't otherwise be able to get. And every no, every every in every organization there is a, a Judas. Yeah. The next video, the next video we're gonna show, has to do with uh Charles White. We we did a video on him a little while ago with him going against the Asians. Asian Crips who were on video saying Asians with attitudes. <laughs> they was on video <laughs> saying nigga this nigga that, but somehow he got flagged saying nigga in his video responding to him saying nigga, to say nigga. It, it, it's just crazy but look at this is what he had to say he he went to the california and spoke mm -hmm. with an og crip and they were challenging him trying to check him about his comments on nipsey hustle and we keep he said we can't even go in we keep, the hero worship we create the, the 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 hero cults we create in our community we worship death people die and they become a hero and you worship them. We They're worship death in our culture. They cannot. They, you can't critique them. Yeah, you, you're no longer allowed to critique Nipsey Hussle. You're not allowed to say um, most people didn't know who he was until he died. Like you're not allowed to say that. You're wrong. And it's like that's the that's the truth. That's just a fact. I heard Nipsey Hussle the first time. I heard Nipsey Hussle was a, a song he had on a on a video game like 20, right. in 2013. We're not talking. We we're not talking. We're talking about outside of California. Yeah, I mean, most of the world didn't know who he was, and then he starts to get mainstream uh, attention and stuff. It's like, okay, his music growing, and then he gets killed, and we know that situation was a whole. That was a whole situation, and then now he's like, he's put next to like the greats of great. It's just like 
It's strange how quickly you arise when you die in our mm-hmm. community. This is this is crazy. But this is what uh, he responded to the dude with. First, let me start by saying this. And it ain't going to be no rebuttals about this. Shock jocks, killers, whoever the fuck run in their mouth. I represent L.A. And I represent this crip shit. I don't give a fuck about a character. But I care about a person's legacy. Don't no nigga disrespect Nipsey Hussle. Monster Cody, Tookie, Raymond Washington, it, nigga. It's tried by 12 or carried by six anywhere, anytime. Well, they characters to me, man. Well, I ain't, so I ain't talking I ain't. about who well, nobody I, I, I else done, opinion. I, done, I didn't I done, interject I done, you. I done disrespected I them, say. though. No, no, well, no, I, no. Well, I done disrespected them, Skull. Yeah, no, you I said this say. in front of me, and I done disrespected no, them. No, no, and no, I just no, said no. I was a shock jock, so, nigga, no, at any no. given time, my time, my nigga, if I feel the need to speak on something, it ain't a man alive. That can muzzle this mouth. Hey, fuck a muzzle I'm willing, I'm willing to when die, you talking, kill, and go to jail by what I speak on. Let's see no, that you're right. Yeah, no, you're you, man, you, you lying to me. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's why I talk so Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold up, hold up. No, that's why I talk so bold. I get it. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We talking like men. I ain't scared to die. I know. We ain't fuck us scared to kill no nigga neither. My nigga, nigga. That ain't what we here for. We ain't arguing. I'm not, because I'm not doing no motherfucking talking. No, I'm man, no, man, no, you man, talk, man, listen, nigga, on, listen, I ain't, I, ain't, I'm listen, I ain't got to justify my words. Word. I ain't got to justify on, my on, words. I ain't, ain't, ain't so. telling you a motherfucking thing. I ain't got to justify my words. No, 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 check this out. I ain't got to justify my words. I ain't got to justify my words to nobody, my nigga. I done said what I done said. So whatever consequences that I done said, I wouldn't accept whatever consequences. I wouldn't accept whatever consequences. We mean, bro, this is my platform and and and, and we, we come I come in love, love but, but I didn't I interrupt it. nobody, and I'm gonna finish. But saying I come in love. But listen, but listen, but we here, yeah. but we here yeah. talking about what our things. I done said. Yeah. No, I'm not and talking I, about I, I, none I, I, of that. I'm y'all talking can about. Talk without me, then. No, 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 no. Y'all don't talk. No, I ain't like that, bro. No, no, no. We ain't talking. No, nigga, I ain't. No, I ain't. I ain't got to justify motherfucking thing. What I done said, my nigga. I done said it. And I now, no, I don't. I ain't got to justify. No, my nigga. I done drove too far from this motherfucker. Got me fucked up, man. Hey, well, we here. Well, y'all talk. Yeah, we here. Y'all gonna talk without California yeah. is here, yeah. nigga. Man, yeah. we, we That's what we meant. Come on, man. We, we gotta, we gotta, we, we gotta do sell. better, man. Now, that's what you call an OG, not an elder. So, we did a video on that. <laughs> we we did a video on that. Uh, Kwame Brown versus uh, Hassan Campbell. Hassan Campbell, OGs versus elders. Now, in that, in that confrontation, and it goes back to Young Dolph. It goes to people die in our community and they become worshipped. Like, I don't care about the game banging, whatever. But when you say you're not allowed to say nothing bad about Tookie and Raymond Washington, the people who created organizations <laughs> that led to so much violence and death and death that tells you we worship death and mass incarceration. Like I'm just saying, I'm not allowed to say and critique these people because you hold them in such high level of reverence. But where I'm not saying they, they, they saw, you know, the, the back and forth with trust and white and the Asians and the other where were these people at when they you're in California? You see these other groups of people saying the N word and all this stuff, but y'all ready to jump up and defend them? I don't get it, and understand it. I mean, we we hate one another. We hate one another. We ready to whoop and and kill. He called himself trying one to... of us, but when anybody else will defend them to the end. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Asian can... now those Asian Crips. He would can... claim them. Could bang with you and kill people in your community, commit violence in your community, drugs in your community, to help you destroy it. But when a when a black man challenges that, like, hey man, what's going on with this? You need to mind your business. Now, this is, Charles this is, White not no better. I'm pretty sure he was a part of a gang. But if we talking about this situation right here, yeah. 
why is it that you can check him so easily but you can't check these other people around y'all that's why i'm telling you california and that damn and new york <laughs> That Two just, thirds got to go. We, we create these hero worshiping situations, and it, it just it never goes well for us. Because now Nipsey Hussle is put on this so pedestal. Yeah, have you when they when they have you know how they have the posters with Martin Luther King yeah, and Rosa put, Parks? Look, I'm Nipsey sorry. Hussle has been look, added on to it. However you feel about the situation, whatever, but you can't tell me that you would put Nipsey Hussle. With Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, Harriet Tubman. Yeah. Are you serious? Because he had a business in a... He had a business in the He hood, owned a business in the black back. community. Plenty of people give back. You, yeah. don't, you don't worship people. I don't know, man. There's a lot of people who give back and you don't even know they give don't back. I don't know. That's not to say that Nipsey was... I, look, I'm not saying he wasn't no good dude or whatever. I don't know. I didn't know him. But, Somebody in the comment section going to check us. Look, man. It is what it is. I'm just look. It just it is what it is. <laughs> Next, we're gonna talk about some politics. <laughs> Finally, gonna talk about a little politics. Demented Joe. Even though we kind of been talking politics the whole time now, but yeah. In this next video, this is Joe Biden <laughs> doing right by a demographic of people, but it ain't the demographic <laughs> that it's supposed to be. What we going on now? I can't even. In. Doing right. Let's see. Let's see who what Biden did for his 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 people. The title of this legislation is "Improving Public Safety and Criminal Justice for Native Americans and Addressing the Crisis of Missing or Murdered Indigenous People." I'm proud to sign it. It's long overdue. General. Thank you all so very much. We're going to make some substantial change in Indian country, and it's going to continue. Thank you all. Yeah, anything that don't revolve around Black Americans, <laughs> it get done. It get done. It get done if you include niggas. Hey, look, where uh, are the statistics he, for this uh, violence against Native Americans? Look, I'm gonna say this. I don't care what he do for them, whatever. But the fact that he still hasn't done it. <laughs> Lynching the, Bill still sitting there. He still hasn't done it for the group that he said single-handedly got him elected. <laughs> it's just, we keep saying it every time we do this, it's just throw your hands in the air, you know. But And you still have people caping for him. Like, hard. they still, like, Hard, creeping for them hard. When are y'all gonna wake up and smell the fucking coffee? Because it's not really about getting anything done for black people. They trying to get jobs. They don't want to do anything for you because they want you to remain at the bottom. They don't want you to rise. How have y'all have not figured that out yet? It's about getting a job. These people want to advance their careers in the next decade. It's so, not even about that. It's why did why does Biden keep doing stuff for everybody besides black people? He signed a bill for Asians. He's now signed the bill for Native Americans. Who is behind Biden making sure that these certain particular bills are getting signed in? We did, a, I, don't, I don't know if it was a podcast or a, a, a video we did saying how Asian people are saying that yeah, Native, Americans, Native are Americans are Asian. Yeah. They, they they fall under the yellow people. That was General Hao Ting, the, the, the former, uh, basically, Secretary of Defense for China. Saying how America came here and took over, and the, took from, over from the yellow people. From the yellow people. And that they are going to take back America. And said they're going to help free the yellow people called the Native Americans. You can look that up. So, is China <laughs> telling 
Joe allowed. Biden to sign in all these different laws I for mean, the Native Americans. He signed for the anti-Asian and he signed a Native American. <laughs> Everybody that's mongoloid right now is getting all these different things <laughs> signed in for him. But there is some people starting to get pissed off. When people be getting pissed off, but there was this article written that I feel like did a good job of expressing the anger. This woman here wrote an article, a black woman. She said, it's time for black America to break up with the Democratic Party. It was an opinion piece on Newsweek. Newsweek, I think people consider that a conservative outlet. Considered a, it's considered a right-wing outlet. Mm-hmm. But she said, in black America, there's a growing contempt for influential far left that talks a woke game. <laughs> now, this and as is, you get and we talked about this how white people getting some of them getting tired of this woke shit. Oh yeah, that's they, in a Democratic Party. Yeah, they getting tired of it. But look at this now. This woman might be a right winger. She might be a Republican. It don't matter. Who gives a damn? Listen to what she says in this article in, in this opinion piece. She said, in all autopsies of the Democratic uh, recent shellacking at the polls, a crucial storyline has been left out: the large gains the Republicans made with Black Americans. In Virginia, Republican Glenn Yorkin, Virginia's new governor, received historic levels of black support, turning Trump gains into black, turning Trump gains with black Americans from a aberration to a trend. We didn't hear about that. No, we did. They, okay. They showed that in Virginia, certain states, okay. counties that were normally blue, flip, flip red. Some black okay. county, a black county in particular, I can't they, remember the name of it. Okay. It flipped red. Uh, the truth is, all is not well between black America and the Democratic Party. And the November 2021 election night results might very well turn out to be rumblings of a breakup that is long overdue. <laughs> in black America, there is growing contempt for an influential far left that talks a woke game on diversity and appropriate pro- appropriates our struggle. <laughs> Listen to this part. Appropriates our struggle in their ads and talking points, but offer our communities little beyond the feeling of inclusion. Far left agenda items like abolish ICE, defund the police and other social justice ma- mainstays Make use of provocative wordsmithing to commodify the black American experience of racial in- exclusion while providing career and other benefits to white liberals. Exactly. They eat off your back. <laughs> the truth mm-hmm. is white liberals have for the pe- last 30 years used black American civil rights wins to advance their own agenda. They've implemented destructive criminal justice laws and incomplete education prom- pendigram- paradigms they have conflated discrimination based on sexual orientation and gender with the horror of anti-black racism. Look, <laughs> this woman's spitting right now. <laughs> they have prioritized immigrants and those they presume are legitimate refugees of our ex- at our expense. Distributing redress and now possible even reparations to those who knowingly broke U.S. immigration laws. This is the preaching to the choir. <laughs> She, is, is she really just is, saying uh, Pamela Denise Long she really just saying in a nutshell make we've it make saying, sense yeah, we've been saying this while progressive accused the right are not talking about anti-black racism when the left does talk about anti-black racism they do so to use our pain not for our benefit they treat black Americans like mascots rather than partners you can tell by the mission creep notice how articles speeches and advocacy start by talking about black women or black people as a re- re- recipient of harm and then shift to people of, of color, color, naming a laundry list of identity groups to their in their proposed redress. Exactly. We how many times have we said this? They'll say black something something something. Then you get in the article and they'll say minority, people of color, marginalized groups, and you go, what the? F-? I thought this was about black people. Yeah. <laughs> and f- oh lord, the next thing you get ready to read. You can go ahead, go ahead, go. You can read it. No, go ahead, go ahead. Where's it at? Uh, black women, people of color. Name a laundry list, whatever. Think of Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio Cortez, offensive appropriating quip. I always say Latinos are black. <laughs> so AOC is black, apparently, but she's black in politics. See, see, black is a is a is a is a is a, is a designation. It's just like of, wait, wait, wait. Black is a designation of poverty. Oh, and now in 2021, black is a designation in politics as oppressed. So anybody so you're in face of oppression. So you need to align yourself with blackness. This is why you have us saying shit like Latinos are black or they'll say we're all the same and all that type of stuff. People of color, they want to 
mix blackness with everything because blackness is everybody know you go through some shit. Everybody see it like damn. But instead of actually doing something, they say, we're going to use that to help us. Once again, somebody has to be at the bottom. They've been doing this shit. Like y'all hear, I complain about it every damn week. <laughs> it's always black and Latinos. <laughs> It can never just or be black and brown or black and brown. It with, can never just be speaking on black people and then talk about Latino issues separately. Wait, they lump them together. So, yeah. They say black and brown. Now I'm seeing, I saw, listen, I saw a pan African say black and brown people. And I said, what the, <laughs> what is going on? So we asked this question last time. We asked it. Did we figure out what brown meant? Is brown black people in South America, South America and the Caribbean Manless. islands? Are that the brown people? Because they say it's the we think it's the Mexicans and all them. I guess now brown is black people from the south of the border, or at least from the Caribbeans in South America. That's brown people, I guess. But why would they be called brown and you be called black? black? That's a, so I'm not understanding. But yeah. They were just mixing everything. Everything is basically in America is white and non-white. That's really all it is. White or and minorities. Yeah, minority. Everybody who's not white. You just everybody just mixed in. At best, the marriage between Black Americans and Democrats has been a arranged one. Back when Republicans and Democrats switched costumes, Nixon era Republicans were so com- uncomfortable with Black Americans that the lesser of two evils became the Black American way. But the code of conduct has since been lost, uh, has since lost its utility. Consider that it was Republican President Donald Trump whose first step act released thousands of black men from prison. Man put there by Democrat crime bill, Democrats crime bill, pushed by our very own Democratic President Biden. Consider the economy under Trump, the historic low levels of black unemployment. But on behalf of Democrats who used to ignore us, we were supposed to see it in Trump, see Trump, see in Trump an enemy. Thus, Joe Biden campaigning on a message that black Americans who don't know if they want to vote for him aren't really black, ain't really black. Today, it's commonplace for white liberals to use hysteria, historical language about white supremacy to gain audience and traction, mobilizing far reaching woke narratives that further erase black Americans as descendants of U.S. slavery, sl- descendants of U.S. slaves and deny us the chance to advocate for ourselves and receive tangible resources that would improve our lives. <laughs> Everything in this article fire. is fire. She, yeah, she went a little long. I she went on a uh, Black News channel, right? Yeah, she was on there. She was he and Mark Lamont Hill and her were talking. His whole thing was typical. Well, who do we vote for? Do we vote for the Republicans who don't have our same? Uh, but she said you part of the game? Green Party. Hold on. Do we vote for the Republicans who don't have our same end game? Do we vote for the Green Party? Do we vote? Uh, uh, well, do we yeah. not vote at all. You should vote for the Green Party since no, you, you are vote at all. I'm saying for somebody who is associated with the Green Party, that's who you should vote for. Well, he was talking about the community at large. The point is, you should vote for who offer you something. <laughs> you shouldn't vote for either any party that don't offer you something. It's not hard. It's hard for black people. <laughs> uh, let's see right here. Loyal to the wrong things. Uh, the left-leaning uh, paternalism of white liberals is more, even more sinister because they claim to advocate for the oppressed using the black American experience to uh, credential their platforms while supplying little to no substance to black America. Every social justice effort since the 1960s Negro civil rights movement owes its success to its use of the descendants of slaves. Yet those who rise to prominence and status do not necessarily prioritize the results for black American citizens in general. And they certainly do not funnel tangible resources directly to our communities. communities. It's that's the liberal way. Use black American pain to demonize the right and make yourselves feel Virtuous. Listen, I don't think I need reading more of this. <laughs> I mean, at this point, she just, you know, oh, she just running laps at this point. Then prioritize every other group but us. It's not just the elected elite and academics either. These appropriations of the black American experience happen in everyday life, especially in nonprofit workplaces, workspaces where black women's expertise is used to credential clueless white leadership structures that capitalize on black marginalization rather than implementing a vision to end it. In too many spaces, black nonprofit workers have job security until they advocate for the interests of black people and speak up for fairness in the organization's culture. (sighs) 
Uh, that that sounds like a, a rallying cry. And yeah. like I said, I think she probably is one of the people that probably lean right. She's probably more Republican. Maybe not. She seemed like she was down the middle. At this point, we don't give a damn. <laughs> what she spoke in the damn article was facts, and it needed to be spoken. We tired of this shit. <laughs> oh, Lord. Also, I found this interesting. There was a Black News Channel released a uh, story. It says Americans withdrawing support for Black Lives Matter movement poll fines. Now they went into this and they said Americans are abandoning the popular Black Lives Matter movement based on data that professors have say shed light on the historical phenomena of African American liberation struggles and civil rights movements. Civics and a nonpartisan online survey firm linked with the progressive media outlet Daily Cost found that 44% of respondents opposed the Black Lives Matter movement and another 43% indicated they support it, while left to say 11% say they don't know whether to support it or oppose it. Support for Black Lives Matter movement peaked at 52% in June 2020, a month after George Floyd was killed, according to the poll, after the shooting of Jacob Blake, a black man, the police officers in Kenesha, Wisconsin, it was uh, in August 2020, and the conviction of former police officer Derek Chauvin in the death of uh, George Floyd, public resistance to the Black Lives Matter has increased. I wonder what percentage of the decrease is black. Well, I think quite a few when people uh, found out that the Patrice Colors and her buying them houses <laughs> and, and then I think when people actually read the mission statement yeah. and the word black man and mean. black family was not included into the damn mission statement, it kind of was like, okay, they don't, they all them they ain't for out. black lives. Yeah, all of them cashed out now. All of them cashed out. They don't make their money. Alicia Gar, she cashed out first. She it's left first. Early. She left early, so. It is what it is, but I want. I, I was wondering when I saw the. I remember when I saw this. I got the uh, um, alert. It said black support for Black Lives Matter has dropped. When you go to the article, that's not in there. So I wonder why did they give you that in the alert? So when you actually click the article, it doesn't clickbait. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, and then <laughs> there's Kamala Harris. Exasperation and dysfunction inside Kamala Harris' frustration, frustrating start as vice president. The vice Say it president, ain't so. The vice president herself has told several confidence she feels constrained in what she is able to do politically. Bitch, what you trying to do uh, politically? I've been telling y'all. I've never seen a politician's, a vice president, I'm sorry. I've never seen a vice president poll numbers be asked, <laughs> talked about, as with hers. Every time Biden's poll numbers come out and get criticized, they make sure to bring out Kamala's numbers right beside it. <laughs> that tells me, that's saying, I think that's the Biden team. I think yeah. the Biden team is releasing information on her, hit pieces on her to make her numbers stay low because they know, I believe, that, when you read this article, the message you get from the article is, Joe, they literally are saying in the article, Joe, you were supposed to teach Kamala how to be president. But you're doing a poor but job. But you're acting like, you acting like you actually trying to govern. Like, you're not here to be president. Your job is to make her look good. So that when it's time to get your ass out, yeah, people will like she her. can just slide into the position. But in the article, they got mad at him. They're saying that the team, Kamala's team was mad at him for sending her to the border, knowing that it was a lose-lose situation politically. And it's like, it's not about politics. I thought y'all cared about, quote-unquote, children in cages. But you saying you didn't want to go down there because it was a lose-lose politically. I mean, personally, I feel like the president should have went to the border. Think so? Yeah. I don't know. I, th I think the That's, vice president he, does that too. Uh, yeah, oh, Joe, but he sent the vice president to do his dirty work. No, Joe Biden, they said in the article the reason why he did it because Obama did it to him. Obama sent him to the border, so he sent her to the border to sign a quote-unquote respect, as they say. Let me show you the article. Worn out by what they see as entrenched dysfunction and lack of focus, key West Wing, aid, West Wing aides have largely thrown up their hands at Vice President Kamala Harris and her staff, deciding to simply, <laughs> there simply isn't time to deal with them right now, especially at a moment when President Joe Biden faces quickly multiplying legislative and political concerns. When you go into this article, see, as you can see, the, the points they make, they, they say that Kamala is uh, being ignored. She's not given enough uh, 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 responsibility. 
her leadership is being neglected. Well, wait a minute. You can't complain about not getting enough responsibility. And he sent you to the board and you complain about. No, it sounds like you want selective responsibility. You want you everything good. that makes you look good. You don't want to deal with real. You want to do it. You don't want to deal with real shit and have to solve stuff. Watch this. The exasperation runs both ways. Interviews with nearly three dozen former and current Harris aides, administration officials, Democratic operatives, donors, and outside advisors who spoke is, is good. extensively to CNN reveal a complex reality inside the White House. Many in the vice president's circle fume that she's what? Fume that she's not being adequately prepared and uh, positioned. You see that? And instead is being sidelined. The vice president herself has told several confidence she feels constrained to what she's able to do politically. And those around her remain wary of even hinting at future political ambitions. With Biden team highly attuned to signs of disloyalty, particularly from the vice president. Is that not what I've been saying? She's afraid to announce she's running for president because she know Biden's going to get pissed. Which don't make sense. It's not Biden. So who was really getting mad at the thought of her trying to announce her running for president this early? Obama? I mean, it, it, it only makes sense. She's, at this point, we're about to be in 2022. And a president's first term, he's, he, next year he's starting his new reelection already in 2022. And let me tell you, he's done a poor job his first year. But is he actually going to run? I can't imagine that Joe Budden would run for Joe Budden. <laughs> Joe Budden. <laughs> Joe, Budden. <laughs> Joe Biden. Joe Biden would run for president again. I can't. I can't see it. But if he don't run, no, he can't run. I, he's not gonna run. Okay. But like, what happens when Kamala Harris say I'm running for president, and now Biden looks like a lame duck? He's a one-term president who ain't gonna have no power. Cause nobody's worried about well, him. He's, he's, he'll be too old to run for president. For no, the point is, if she announced she's running for president next year, early early next year, or at least it's understood she is. And oh, better yet, if Biden announces he's not running for re-election, his presidency is gonna become lamed up. Like nobody's gonna pass nothing because it's like you're only gonna be here for one year. What's the point? I Me mean, off for four years. What's the point? I ain't got to worry about you for eight. You gonna be gone in three well, years. Well, she she years. has to make her announcement next year. So, well, no, I'm talking about him. She can't she can't announce it. She can't announce it until he announced he's not running. That's the point. Well, he got to let us know something. Well, see, that's the thing. In the article, they're saying that he's being really. They don't know. I mean, people know he's not running. He's, but he's not, not running. said it out loud yet. He's not gonna run president. Or at least his handlers haven't acknowledged it yet. She's a heartbeat away from the presidency now. She could just be a year away from launching a presidential campaign of her own, given doubts throughout the political world that Biden will actually go through with a re-election bid in 2024, something he's pledged to do publicly and privately. What? Or she'll be a critical <laughs> uh, violator in three years for a president trying to get get the country to re-elect him to serve until he's 86. Man, get that. Man, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Biden old ass ain't running for no fucking president again. <laughs> he don't even know where he... He uh, he's shitting on himself and and sharting, <laughs> sharting on himself. <laughs> How the fuck he gonna run for president? He run around with damn diapers on and got damn baby wipes. Jill yeah. got him her damn purse ready to go for his ass. Remember when he uh he was talking and he got lost and said, "Where's everybody?" And the guy behind him started laughing and started texting <laughs> his phone. And his wife came up like, "Hey, we're here." Tell me he's he's pledged to do it openly and privately. Yeah, okay. Shit, the only thing you pledge to do. Was it check yourself into a damn nursing home after you're done running for them, after your uh, pregnancy is over. Defenders of people who care for Harris are getting frantic. When they're annoyed, some pass around a recent Onion story uh, mocking her lack of more substantive, substantive work. One with the headline, White House urges Kamala Harris to sit at a computer all day in case emails come through. <laughs> when, when they're depressed, they bat down the Aaron Sorkin style rumor that Biden might try to replace her by nominating her to the Supreme Court vacancy. That chat has already reached top level at the Biden orbit, according to one person who's heard it. So, is that the plan? Not for you to run for president, for me to put you on the Supreme on, Court. On the Supreme Court, make you. Remember, he said Biden promised that he was gonna put a black woman on the Supreme Court. Remember, he's not a black woman. I know, but Biden said he's gonna put a black woman on the Supreme Court. So, what if her ambition is president, but somebody else's is you going to the Supreme Court? 
Well, we're going to see who going to win. <laughs> who is the wizard behind and the if curtains? Not, if, if, if the spot is there and he nominates her, do she decline it? Okay, the second she declined it is, oh, she runs for president. Exactly. Political. Who's going to be her running mate, though? I told you who I think running. Who? I think Keisha Bottoms is running for president. Oh, Keisha Bottoms and Kamala? No. I don't think she's going to run with Kamala. I don't think you can have a two women ticket. Hell no. It'll probably be Keisha Bottoms and. It's got to be a man. I don't know. Mr. Tim, Mr. Tim Scott. What? <laughs> now, Tim Scott could be a Republican. I don't know. We'll see. So basically, this whole article was a. It was a defense of Kamala Harris, but it wasn't really an attack on Biden. It was a. He's not supposed to be. He's not really the president. At least he's supposed to be nurturing her, but he's not. He's misusing her and she's been attacked because she's a woman of color. She's a well, woman she, and she's of color. He's not even. I don't think Biden is the one that's mentoring Kamala. I think Barack Obama is the one that's mentoring Kamala. And maybe he's seeing that she's not fit to be a uh, president. And she's not going to obey and do what she's, supposed to, what she's supposed to do as president. Or maybe she's just not likable. He's yeah. like, I don't know how the fuck we're going to get you in here. You're just not likable. Not we put you on a video with kids. they like, this is fake. <laughs> they don't like your laugh. You move <laughs> like me. You act like me. But your swag don't come through like me. Yeah. So we're going to have to find somebody else, Kamala. And she's like, no, this is what we agreed to, damn it. Well, Hillary- you know how many people I fucked to get here? <laughs> God. <laughs> Oh, so Hillary says she was supposed to be president. And I tell you what, she is. She was. Hillary ain't. Let me let me calm my voice now. Hillary Clinton still has a bid to be a be the president. <laughs> she ain't never leaving. I don't, I don't care what nobody say. Nah, she never. I out. never rule Hillary Clinton out. Never will I rule her out. Hillary Clinton believes that she is destined to be the first female president. And she has not given up on it. I guarantee you she nah, has not that, given up on it. That ship is sailed. But you look at this. Kamala Harris communication director is leaving administration. How many people have left that her administration at this point? They 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 just quitting on. They're really quitting. Simone her. Sanders wanted to be part of her administration. No, she wanted to be No a Biden, sorry. Part of Biden's. And he said it was a lower step for her to be on Kamala's team. Yeah. Vice President Kamala Harris <laughs> Communication Director Ashley is leaving the Biden administration to pursue other opportunities. <laughs> a White House official to CNN. Ashley is a valued member of the vice president's team who has worked tirelessly to advance the goals of the administration. The official says she is leaving the office in December to pursue other opportunities. This is like Trump's administration, huh? Yeah. There was a time. Her administration is like Trump. There was time there when they was they Trump was just, the damn administration like a revolving door. Yeah, it was it was crazy. They'd be there for no more than three months, then the next thing you know, they out. Yeah. Also, <laughs> how you know shit ain't going well is when you see shit like this right here. <laughs> this is Jen uh Saki. This is the <laughs> press secretary. Who just she, got back from a COVID nineteen. She felt the need to say for anyone who needs to hear it, VP is not only a vital partner to the president of the United States, but a bold leader who has taken on key important issues to face of the country, to face the country from voting rights to addressing root causes of migration to expanding broadband. Hmm. That tells me it might be worse than we even think. It might Damn. be worse. That means you, <laughs> you had to tweet a fluff tweet out for her because people think y'all hate each other. This means that the the the, yeah. the administration is yeah 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 I don't really get along with her, <laughs> but you know, I've been saying for the longest they've been trying to get rid of her for the longest they've been trying to get rid of Kamala as far as long term they don't want her to run for president they don't think she can win mm-hmm. but she's gonna try <laughs> she's she gonna can't try. she can't win she dropped out before she was the first person to drop out wasn't she. Here's yes, something I wish I knew. If you, been- yes, she was. <laughs> but look at this right here. Jackie will not run for re-election in Congress in 2022. There's been a dozen, I think I've seen a dozen uh, Democratic 
politicians that already said they're either not going to run, they're running for a different office, or they're retiring. So they already see in 2022 it's going to be a slaughter. The seat's going to be flipped. So they're just like, I'm they're old, like, fuck it. I'm out now. I don't fight fighting no more. We played the game long Time enough. Time to put this old dog down. <laughs> they are basically going to say it's already over. We might as well move on with our life. The, the, everything they've done, I've, I don't know if I've seen politicians run a campaign, run a presidency so poorly to where they have no real base. All, their only base is anti-Trump. That's their base, the people who hate Trump. If, if you're not one of those people that's an extremist uh, as far as your views on Trump, you're indifferent towards him, then you you probably in the more than likely is not a person who voted for him. <laughs> Still thinking about that night. Still have <laughs> nightmares. <laughs> Body was just tingling. You know, what we going, why? Some bullshit is afoot. I don't Something know where. in my spirit just tells me them crackers, I mean, them people's up to something. I said something, something is going wrong. <laughs> but uh, let me show y'all. You you want oh. to talk about this? So this is you want to talk about this? This was the, the Black News Channel's defense. This was their defense of Kamala Harris. I didn't watch this, so you, I watched it. So you watched it. You got to dive into what it is and what it means. Okay. So what we about to watch? So on this episode of fraudulent black news channel <laughs> you have this uh this reporter whatever you call her and the guy so she's pretty much gonna say how uh they're pretty much only painting this bad picture of kamala harris because she's the first female president not only is she the first female president she's the first person a uh, female person of color to be the vice president and how They've never had uh, a polls like this for any other vice president. Normally, the vice president is tucked in the back and you I, really don't hear from them. I said that. That's true. Which is true. But the whole point about it is nobody is picking on Kamala Harris because of sexism or a misogy of being misogynist. They I, don't like Kamala Harris because of her personality. Well, I won't say I won't say none. I'm sure there's people that just I don't like her because she this right here. I don't they don't like her because of her personality she's not charismatic yeah that too <laughs> she's fake yeah people can see through that bullshit yeah. that's why they don't like kamala harris and you and you know i i don't like to call people simps <laughs> but the guy on this the the was, guy that's with her on this platform he was a sippish was he Yes, he was. He's falling behind her, and he should have said, no, that ain't the reason why. <laughs> he's the one that brought up the sexism part and the misogynist part. Well, he, not, he didn't follow behind her then. And then you know what? She used the term black girl magic. Yeah. Uh, for Kamala. Black women. For Kamala? For Kamala in a uh, segment. It seems to me like black women care more about, they don't care. They no, more no. Focused. Correct that. Some. Okay. Some black women just care about the fact of having a brown face in office to say that the first the first black woman to be vice president, like when you had the first quote unquote black man to be president, just to have a face in the office makes you feel good. Yep. That's, and that's a terrible thing they've to want representation people, for. They've convinced people that quote unquote representation is all that matters. They've convinced people of that. So it's unfortunate. Just so they can say black girl magic. Yeah. You ready to watch it? Yeah. So let's see what he had to say about this topic. The White House is defending Vice President Kamala Harris after reports of dysfunction. Uh, they said she had a lack of focus. Ooh. Her and her staff. I mean, it's all over the place. By the way, They're reporting on the lowest. By the way, they did say in that article <laughs> that this is not new to her staff, that she also had terrible staff management in San Diego. Or San Francisco, I'm sorry. <laughs> and Cali. So if you can't manage that, how you gonna manage? They say this goes back her entire career. She always has a her 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 staff is always unorganized and in chaos. Poll numbers for vice president in history, I believe it's twenty eight percent. I think context mm -hmm. is everything. Okay. Well, let's be clear here. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
We've never had a, a vice president of color. We've never had a female vice president. So you can take your poll mm -hmm. numbers and, okay, is what you can do with your poll numbers. Listen. Was that professional? This woman. I, I, every time we talk about this these woman. These anchors are just are terrible on, on these plat this platforms. Every time we talk about this woman, I say, something is wrong with that woman. It's like she'd be looking off into the damn the studio uh, she's in. She just kind of days off and start looking it's around. It's like, does she not want to look? At, or do they look at one another while they're recording? Or? No, they're supposed to look at the camera. That's okay. why the dude who's done this before, he looks at the camera. She's just all over the place, she and I'm surprised just, nobody has told her, ma'am, you need to look into the camera, not I mean, all over the fucking place. I've been saying this for like, how long has been? I've been saying this for like three months. This woman, something's wrong with her. But, you know. The, the, the attacks, the vitriol, the lack of foresight by, and I'm just talking about from the administration. We can get to the outsiders, okay? All of these leaked reports and nonsense. I think a couple of things are going down here, um, and, and and we can get to Jen Psaki's statement in a moment. She gave uh, that blanket mm -hmm. support and called out some specific issues that Kamala Harris is charged <laughs> with leading. But I think to be clear here, there are some people within the Biden orbit who don't like this narrative of he's going to do one term and then turn over the Democratic Party and the presidency if everything goes according to plan to this woman exactly now you t you don't mean to tell me that everybody in, in everybody knows that kamala harris is supposed to be the next president that's just that's what she just said ain't it said, said according to plan which means everybody in a loop in an industry not politics even, not even in a loop people paying attention to politics know that's, that's the plan i don't I, i've said before i don't think he make it past 2022 i think after the midterms i think they're gonna have because if she if they make her if they make Biden a step down now, she won't be able to run for a second term. She'll be able to run for one term as president, but she won't be able to run for a second because she'll have more than two years as president. But if we leave after 2022, she'll be able to run those two years, run four more and four more after that. She can run for a 10-year presidency. Everybody's in a loop that this is the plan. This has been a plan since the whole thing started. Yeah, but she won't win, at least not legitimately. How can you openly write, come out and say, Oh, Kamala Harris is supposed to be the next president. <laughs> Woman of color who loves a pantsuit. Mm. Okay. I don't think mm -hmm. there's some people close to the president who want that narrative to continue. And they want to get the message out right before the bloodbath that is expected to be in the midterms. Well, yeah, I, I can see that happening um, because Biden uh, will be 82, I believe, uh, come 2024. He'll be 86 at the end of his second presidency if he's uh, reelected. Uh, but I think that would be kind of asinine, to be quite honest with you. Why wouldn't you want to keep uh, Harris uh, in the know, in the in the running, uh, making her feel a big part of the team, uh, energizing the Democratic Party uh, because this is part of your administration? But you're right, Sharon, I don't know why this is even an issue because how many vice presidents have you heard of in your lifetime since you've been around outside of Dick Cheney? Because Dick Cheney ran the country when George W. Bush was the president. Everybody knows that. He did. Uh, how many? Are you going to say who's running the president right now? I mean, we can admit Dick Cheney was running the president. We can admit right now it ain't it ain't Biden. So who is it? Mr. We'll let them answer it. <laughs> uh, vice presidents actually got this much, I don't know, even notoriety. They're usually in the background. Nobody says anything about them. They but who also says that the vice president is going to be the next president? Who says that? Have you ever heard them say that? Most presidents expect to win twice. But you, once. you guys are sitting here saying, well, most presidents aren't brought into the light. They're, they're, you know, they're more so tucked in the back. But you guys are purposely trying to put Kamala Harris out in the front. So that the public can be aware that she is going to be the next president. So it's a weird thing. You're pushing her to the forefront, but you don't like the criticism. She's you receiving. only want her to be viewed in a positive light. And that's not what's happening right now. Yeah. Reside over the Senate. Get her to decide and vote if it's 50-50. We understand that. But at the same time, it's like, why is this even an issue? You talk about the poll numbers. And yes, they, I, I read them yesterday. Talking about the lowest in modern history. But... Uh, the president's poll numbers aren't that great, to be quite honest with you. Right? So they throw on the president on, on the bus on, to on, save on, her on, ass. On, wow.
Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wow. So these people, keep in mind, these people are pro-Biden. They're now throwing Biden under the bus so that they can have, they're trying to defend Harris's poor numbers with Biden's poor, Biden's poor numbers. But also in throwing Biden under the bus at the same time. Yeah. So you're throwing Biden under the bus for Kamala, but if you throw him under the bus, you're throwing the administration under the bus. Because he's the leader of the administration. Which means you're hurting her as well. Dumb. <laughs> right now, so uh, when those numbers higher, go up, I'm pretty it. sure her numbers will go up as well. And yeah, and, and her being the first woman, we still live in a very misogynist society here in the United States. And obviously, we don't even have to talk about the racism that we still have to deal with in this country. She's the there he person. goes, playing those three angles. Funny, the, the first thing you mentioned was her gender. Ain't that funny? She's married to a white man. That's a fun. That's, it's crazy. It's How y'all gonna fucking ignore this woman is married to a white man? <laughs> Any fucking body that's married to a fucking white person, you ain't dealing with no fucking racism. Get the fuck out of here. Dealing with that double sort of negative coming out of the vice presidential yeah. role. Not coming from me, but double negative here in America when it comes to being the vice president of the United States. So, yeah, these reports coming out, I don't know why they're coming out. I don't know what the purpose of them coming out or whatnot. But to me, it, it, it's a non-story until uh, 2024 when it is time to uh, for Biden to run for re-election again and to see if Kamala Harris is his running mate or if Biden doesn't run and the, the, the torch is sort of passed to her to be the future of the Democratic Party. Yeah. So y'all telling us right here what the plans is. Y'all, they don't even try to hide it no more. Well, this is what they want to happen. This ain't the plan. They, they don't know either. These people on the outside. This is what they, the bougie class, the, 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 the boule class of black people wanted Kamala in, the, in, 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 in office because she's a part of those sororities. She got connections. And she breaks an ice. They thought she would be an icebreaker for them. But she's not well received by the public. So now they got to blame everything except for the fact she's not likable. So the plan was Kamala becomes president. Kamala gets the pres uh, vice presidency. Then she gets the presidency. She's probably going to choose some woman as her VP. Then after that, now, now we're going to put, then this is what they thought. Across the board in politics, it was going to be, this is just to them, it was going to be black women. They were just going, it's an influx. And it, as you think about it, all the people running for office and winning seats, that's who it is. <laughs> it's not really black dude. Black men aren't really running for office like that. So, y'all think that's what you want to say on this topic? No. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, these politics is, the streets getting real iffy <laughs> for them. Like I said, we all expect a bloodbath in 2024. Really, I'm sorry, 2022. So, them seats are going to be flipped. You just got to wait and see. Now, this story right here. Michelle Wu sworn in as Boston first woman and Asian American mayor. Now, there was an interim mayor, a black woman. She was the first woman to get the seat, but she wasn't voted in. She was an interim because the other guy had to step back. Other person had to step down. Now, when I saw that she won this race, I thought, uh-oh, Asian people are like really winning winning seats. You are look, being given seats. Look at Andrew Wayne try to try to run, and he got how you got a million millions of followers on Twitter, and you lose to a dude with less than twenty k on Twitter on, on social media, and he beats you, and you come in fourth. Like people really just didn't like you. No, they didn't like him. So Andrew Yang was a flop. Her winning in Boston, which now is, her husband is obviously Caucasian. Oh, I knew that was around the corner. But I saw this and it made me think the push is really happening. They're really, you're seeing a push in America. We saw it, it started with the coronavirus thing, the anti-American hate, anti-Asian hate thing. You're not allowed to say certain things. Making black people the face of whooping Asian people. And that, another ass. video just came out on a train of some black people fighting some Asian people. They just they did it again. So now the push is happening. They're trying to make them a protected class. And they also at the same time, they've been fighting for this 
title of a uh, minority for the longest. They are they're considered a minority, but they're not treated like a minority because they're not a minority. They 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 they're a minority as far as numbers in the country, but they're not treated like one. The college admissions and all that stuff they didn't like it, so now they are officially a minority, and they're starting to break through. And I did not saw this. China overtakes U.S. as world's richest. Experts sound caution. There we go. So China now has, according to this, will have very soon, pretty much already got it, the richest economy on the planet. We're shocked. We've been telling, <laughs> we've been telling y'all who pulling the fucking screens behind the, behind the scene and fucking Biden administration. So when you see the moves being made by China, they're, China expects the aren't, next century to be theirs. Aren't they trying to get an Asian person for currency? Yes. The currency, what's them call it? What do you call it? Yeah, the woman, uh, the uh, currency comptroller, the woman from Russia, right? Yeah. The Asian woman from Russia. I can't say that name. <laughs> Who they they're calling her what a communist and a, a Marxist? Since she's a communist, she when she went to a Leninist, she was part of a Leninist group or but, whatever. But President Biden is one that nominated her. I wonder why. <laughs> Man, <laughs> this shit is ridiculous. It is. All right, let me show y'all. They, they always got the nerve to talk about Trump in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this shit. Black farmers say they lost jobs to white South Africans who arrived on guest worker visas. Well, Six black farmers have filed a federal lawsuit claiming that white South African workers were illegally paid at higher rates than local black workers. Do it to you every time. So wait, let me get this right. So they South Africans are kicking out the white Africans and the white and Americans are taking them in and paying them more than the black farmers they got. How do they always put them in areas where black people is? That's how you start it. You got to go from the bottom to the top. You got to be above They literally somebody. always put the immigrants in that black areas. It's crazy. Let me show you all this article. Six black farmers, we already saw that. The Times highlighted one of the plaintiff's framework, uh, farm worker, Richard Strong, per the outlet, dozens of young white workers flew in from South Africa on special guest work visa, worker visas, Mr. Strong and his co-workers trained the men. They trained them. I, you know what? I swear I was about to say, they they put you with a nigga so they train you like they do normally in places of work. Yeah, who by last year were being lured across the globe with wages of more than $11 an hour compared with the $7.25 an hour that Mr. Strong and other black local workers were paid. While growers have brought in more South, uh, South Africans over the past decade or so, several, several other longtime workers said that they were told their services were no longer needed. The New York Times reported the rate of which they've been hired between 2011 and 2020 soared 441%, making them the second largest ethnic group to receive H2A visas in America, an outlet noted. <laughs> At this point, it's just like, are they wrong? I'm saying, if this was black people doing this for black people, would that be wrong? Um, we talking about morally? Yeah. Not even morally, just it's your peoples. Well, I don't even, I don't even know how to answer it. Be, okay. So you're saying if this was black people bringing in black people from South Africa? From any country. It's, it's wrong. It's It's wrong. People have a it's wrong viewing it from a not a ethnic but a national look. Like if if you if you have American as your top thing, you view yourself as an American, not as an uh, individual inside of America, and you're like, I'm an American bringing in South Africans, and then I'm going to pay them more money and then excuse the other people that's working here. If you're uh, viewing it from an American no, mindset, I, say, I said racial, racially. No, it's not wrong racially. All right. Under the H-2A program, growers can be hired, uh, can hire foreign workers for up to 10 months and must also show that they have tried and failed to find Americans to perform the work and they must pay 
domestic workers the same rate <laughs> they are paying the imported laborers. So they have to prove they ain't got nobody to work. That's how they get into work. So they, they'll say, we ain't got nobody down here. So the black dudes, like, <laughs> right here. And they're like, we ain't got nobody. Yeah, so we got to hire these foreigners. And then they pay them more. A co-worker of Pitt's Forum Parliament Partnership, which was named as a defendant of the lawsuit, declined to discuss their high methods with the New York Times reportedly because of pending litigation. The lawsuit come at a time when black farmers throughout the country are being, have been seeking redress for historical discrimination from the federal government. Despite farmers of color being granted funds under the American Rescue Plan, white American farmers were later granted an injunction blocking the aid after claiming it was discriminatory. <laughs> so to pay you back for discrimination, but I'm going to block it because that's discrimination. It's discrimination to pay you back for discrimination. And then after that, we got Fauci still. Fauci still out here in these streets somehow. <laughs> Fauci says COVID-19 boosters might become new standard for being vaccinated. COVID-19 booster shots may become the new standard to be considered fully vaccinated according to the nation's top doctor. Now, just last week. When they say might, they're saying that it's going to be implemented. Just last week. There was a man who said <laughs> that you're not going to be considered vaccinated if you don't get the booster. And they said that was false and did a whole fact check on it. Mr. Uh, Ron DeSantis says from the Florida governor. As you can see, fact check. DeSantis falsely claimed vaccinated citizens without boosters will be declared unvaccinated and lose their job. So wait, if I'm not fully vaccinated, unless I get the booster and if I'm not fully vaccinated, I can't do certain things and I am going to be designated unvaccinated. Right? Yeah. So that's not a false claim. Cause now you got him out here saying, yeah, you're not really vaccinated. If you don't get the booster, as you can see, COVID-19 booster shots may well, they may become the new standard to be considered fully vaccinated. According to the nation's top doctor, Dr. Anthony Fauci discusses the impending need for hundreds and millions of Americans to roll up their sleeves and get the jab during a pre taped interview that aired in 2021 Stat Summit in Boston this week. I happen to believe that the immunologist and infectious disease person that the third shot boost of the, for the mRNA vaccine should be part of an actual standard regime where a booster isn't a luxury. The director of the National Institute of Allerg Allergy and Infectious Disease reportedly said a booster isn't an add on and a booster is part of what the original regime should be. So that when we look back on with this, we're going to see that boosters are essentially for an optimal vaccine regime. So you're not vaccinated until you get a third one. So the Pretty fourth, much. So the fourth one is the booster. The third one is actually part of the shot. <laughs> the fourth is the booster. <laughs> so it's going to be required pretty much that you get a shot yeah, yeah, every three months. Yeah, pretty much. Or every four months. Well, at first they were saying six months. They well, was, damn, it can't be every six months because I feel like they started getting them at the beginning of this year. This would be the third shot and <laughs> for some people in one year. And then they're coming out with COVID no, pills. There, there's people who are on the, yeah, you're right, the COVID pills is coming too. There's people who are on a fourth, fifth shot. Like There's some people going on no shot. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's, there's people that's... <laughs> They're going to be looking crazy by the end of the time. By the, by the time they stop forcing you to take those shots, they're going to be out here with. <laughs> they're going to be crazy out here. They're going to be out here looking like <laughs> they did their thing off a of man in black. <laughs> sugar. sugar. More sugar. <laughs> Dr. Fauci says he expects babies and toddlers will have a COVID vaccine by spring 2022. Are you serious? So now. Babies and we toddlers. We going after the babies? The babies. <laughs> Not my baby. Not my baby. So now, <laughs> babies and toddlers need to be vaccinated. Are they going to be giving, uh, are they going to be giving the vaccinated uh, fetuses, they, unborn babies? Are, pregnant women. They're going to be sticking it through? Pregnant women. Yeah. They, they, pregnant women are being told to get vaccinated. So yeah, fetuses. Mm. They want every last person. They oh yeah they vaccinating animals too in the zoo yeah which is just crazy <laughs> a couple of them done had a you know they done had some croak but, done croak too 
Dr. Fauci says children from six months to five years old may be able to get vaccinated against COVID-19 by the spring of 2022. Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine seems likely to be the front runner for FDA authorization at that age group. Has Pfizer BioNTech vaccines, it hasn't been approved yet. No one is talking about community no more. They still did a damn switcheroo on people. That the old switcheroo. They did the damn switcheroo. <laughs> they, they hit the okie duck on people. <laughs> <laughs> Can't guarantee it. You've got to, <laughs> you got to do the clinical trial. In fact, you said his predicted timeline. He said kids younger than five years old are the only people in the U.S. who still can't get COVID-19 vaccines. But Dr. Anthony Fauci says they and their parents shouldn't have to wait too much longer. Hopefully within a reasonable short period of time, likely the beginning of next year in 2022, the first quarter of 2022, it will be available to them. Fauci told Insider, though he quickly acknowledged that there really is no way to know that for sure. You know it for sure because you already know it's predetermined. They Every time it. you come out and say there it might be a, I mean, it happens. The mask might be required to wear. And then it comes out, it's required to wear. Like, stop it, man. Detroit school will close on three Fridays next month amid COVID concerns. Mm. So I guess COVID is really mean on Fridays. No, on Fridays, the kids be ready to get out of school and they so forget they just, to social distance. Yeah, they get antsy. They antsy. They just so know all the rules. They know. So they give them that three day weekend. So wait. If they get antsy on Friday because they're not, they're not gonna, they don't have to go to school. So that means on Thursday, on Thursday they're they gonna get antsy. <laughs> so they gotta put it to the Wednesday, and on Wednesday they're gonna get antsy to the point where they just don't go to school, <laughs> which is what they want. They don't want them in the damn school. Teachers like, thank God, <laughs> they deal with these brats. No, they don't say brats. Deal with these. It's Detroit. Deal with these niggas. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> damn, these little nigglets. I'm tired of dealing no, with No, they niggas. don't say niggas. Just, these are black teachers in those classrooms. Deal with these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> Biden administration buys 10 million courses of uh of Pfizer COVID treatment pill and five billion dollar deal. <laughs> Tell me how they go, y'all. So wait. So they already he already bought five billion worth of the pills. Mm. This is a month. This, look, this seems like a damn mon- money well, scheme. I'm telling you, people like you know, black people like I already got about ten, twelve pills. I'm already I ain't trying to get off. Taking no more pills. I'm trying to get off about three pills right now. And they want to add more. Blood pressure pill, the sugar, <laughs> the blood pressure pill, the diabetes pill, the blood clock pill. <laughs> President Joe Biden on Thursday said the U.S. has bought ten million courses of Pfizer COVID treatment pill and oral antiviral medita- medication. That has highly effect that is uh, that was highly effective in preventing hospitalization among high risk adults in clinical trial. So who are the pills for? The people elderly? Who, it's for old people. So they give old people more pills. So anybody who's susceptible to get COVID and suffer from it is for you. <laughs> the pill could fundamentally change the fight against the virus. Providing physicians with a drug that patients can take at home after infection. The the highly effective shit. at home treatment could help reduce the stress of the hospitals have faced throughout the pandemic, particularly during the recent wave of Delta infections. We, t- we still talking about Delta, apparently. Oh, we haven't moved on to we another we uh, move on by now. Greek alphabet. Yeah, we, we, we still on Delta. We still on Delta. No, thank you. Look at this right here. Most vaccinated place on earth cancels Christmas. This country is 100% vaccinated and they had a surge. I wonder, what, I wonder what they're doing over there. They canceled Christmas events and strongly discouraged people from hosting private gatherings for four weeks. What's the point of getting... What's the point? The point of getting vaccinated is so that, you know, you'll recover. 100... I'm sorry, not even 100%. 118 percent because even the people who visited more than 118 percent of population are the, fully vaccinated against COVID 19 with the, the figure stretching beyond 100 percent due to doses given to spaniards who cross the border to work or to visit the territory every day masking is still required in shops and on public transport the vaccine is not a cure it's to keep you from dying supposedly supposedly I mean, we can't even go into that <laughs> we can't even touch that but so they changed the definition of. So you got your country to get 100% vaccinated and you're still going on lockdown. Shit, that'll be if, hold on. If this is America and everybody is vaccinated and then people still getting sick, that's, that's when they say, fuck it. Oh, yeah, they'll be like, oh, they're you like, know, fuck it. Oh, they, they're like, oh, oh, y'all hustling. 
We're not gonna take it anymore. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was uh was it uh, uh Germany? No, no, Australia, wasn't it? Australia. That oh, was Australia. They was outside singing saying we're not gonna take it anymore. And look at this. L- listen to this, y'all. FDA wants until year tw- 2076 to fully release Pfizer vaccine data, FOI. F-O-I-A lawsuit. Shit, show. the people who got the vaccine be done gone, gone to glory. David done passed away. The Food and Drug Administration, FDA, <laughs> asked a federal judge on November 15th to give it until the year 2076 to fully release all of the data and the documents. Shit, the big wheel will be here by then. The As like Fer- <laughs> Farrakhan, the big wheel will be here by then. <laughs> by, the, by then, we'll have the files on JFK. <laughs> By then, shit is done. We'll have the files on Martin Luther King. We'll have the files on all these people by then. Look at this. Shit. It's done and over with. The Food and Drug Administration asked the federal judge, we read that, the approval of, (laughs) fully released all the data and documents the agency used as a basis for the approval and license on the Pfizer BioNTech COVID-19 vaccine. In essence, the FDA wants 55 years to produce this information to the public. It took the FDA exactly 108 days from when Pfizer started producing the records for a license, licensure to when the FDA licensed the uh, Pfizer vaccine. Now the agency is saying that it uh, it would fully release the records in question in 20,000 days, 55, <laughs> 55 years from today. The plaintiff, Public Health and Medical uh, Professionals for Transparency, is a group of doctors and scientists, including Harvey Rich, uh, a professor of etymo- etymology, uh, Epidemiology. At the Yale School of Public Health, the group uh, filed the lawsuit PDF after the FDA denied their request to expedite the release of the records. The plaintiff and the defendant, unable to reach an agreement on a disclosed on a disclosed schedule, are seeking a hearing to argue their case before the judge, who may eventually make a decision in that regard. The FDA promise to transparency is, to put it mildly. A pile of illusion. Aaron Siri, whose firm is representing in a lawsuit, wrote in a blog post on November 17th. Uh, the FDA did not respond to request to comment. Instead, two days ago, the FDA asked the federal judge to give it until 2076 to fully produce the information. The FDA asked the judge to let it produce 329,000 pages of documents Pfizer provided to the FDA to license its vaccine at the rate of 500 pages per month, which means its production would be <laughs> would not be completed in, earlier than 2076. The FDA's promise of transparency, to put it mildly, is a power of illusion. Bullshit. <laughs> so, you want me to wait until 2076 to find out the data you use to, to make a reason why we should take this vaccine? Shit gonna be over by then. Alright. These people... Look at this shit right here. Which one? Uh, let me see. We do this one right here first. Biden administration will invest billions to expand coronavirus vaccine manufacturing. When you go into this article, this is a 15 year plan. You know what that means? 15 more years. This ain't going nowhere, getting buddy. getting the jab. U.S. aims to lift COVID vaccine manufacturing to create 1 billion doses a year. Or popping pills. The White House, under pressure from activists to increase the supply of coronavirus vaccines to poor nations. So wait, instead of Pfizer giving their uh, uh, a recipe, I guess you want to call it, to poor countries so they can do it, make it themselves, they would rather America buy it to give it away because so they want to make money out of it. Pretty much. These people, boy. <sighs> More monkeypox. CDC monkeypox virus cases confirmed in Maryland, second in the U.S. in 2021. We talked about monkeypox. What was that? Like three months ago. Three, four months ago. Mm-hmm. Monkeypox had one case. That's a, non, a disease that people get, or not a disease, in some Africa. virus people catch in Nigeria in particular. West and Africa. Both cases came from somebody who traveled from Nigeria to America. This is number two. <laughs> we saw that shit. This is number two. We saw how it happened with COVID, it was one people here, another person there. They're starting in Washington State. Yeah. 
I wonder why they decided to name it Monkey Pox. Oh. <laughs> what? Don't they get it from monkeys in uh, what you call it? It's like a um, it's it's a really nasty looking virus. It's gross. It's very nasty looking. Look at this right here. Vials labeled smallpox discovered at Merck Lab in Montgomery County prompt FBI investigation. You do know that smallpox is only supposed to be in Russia, Moscow, laboratory, and the CDC in Atlanta. Not supposed to be in Philadelphia or Pennsylvania. <laughs> look like they're trying to get some shit started. I mean, it look like they're playing with shit. They're just playing around and having fun. Like, what can we do next to them? So, you got the coronavirus going around. You got monkey pops popping up in the United States. And now you got... And don't forget the plague. Yeah. The bubonic plague has happened twice in Colorado. Yeah. So what the, they just they just playing with these viruses? What are they doing? They want some shit to pop off. It's a dangerous game they're doing. We're going to skip this for now. We're going to skip this one. Look at this right here. Fact check. Tipping became tipping began amid slavery, then helped keep farm, former black slaves wages low. What? They, in this article, they make a point that the idea of tipping came from people not wanting to pay black people proper wages. So tipping <laughs> also started from <laughs> black people. The claim tipping became popular in the United States because restaurant owners didn't want to pay black workers after ratification of the 15th Amendment. I ain't got to read it all, but point much to come to the point, you can go down here. Uh, now, fact checks ain't always true. This is uh, USA Today. But they say our ruling, this is their ruling, based on our research, the claim that Tiffany became popularized by restaurant owners who didn't want to pay black workers after the passage of the 15th Amendment is generally true, though more conscious is helpful. Wouldn't that mean partially true? Tipping in America began before the Civil War, but afterward, it, it, it is true that employees in the restaurant industry, railroads, and more used the practice of tipping as a way to keep some wages low. Formerly enslaved black people who worked in many of those jobs. Still do to this day. Still do to this day. You go down south, see black people working in fast food chains and restaurants. Speaking of this, elderly black woman found hanging from trees in this Maryland. Had yeah. me in an uproar. A 72 year old. Indianapolis woman identified had uh has been withheld. Identity has been withheld. That's what they decided to say. Yeah. A 17 year old black woman was found hanging from a tree in Maryland on November 3rd. The woman was around <clears throat> found around 7 30 a.m. on Bell Drive in Annapolis. Annapolis Police Department responded after several elementary and middle school schoolers saw the woman hanging from the tree on the way to school, her name being withheld until her extended family can be properly notified of her death. So I guess she committed suicide. I mean, how many times they found like three people in Cali? I think they found like two people in Alabama. Now they found her. It's like they'll, they'll say, oh, it was a something happened. Yeah. Inconclusive. Elaborate. What <laughs> happened? It's inconclusive. Counselors were available in and out of middle school. They talked about the kid. I can imagine as a kid. Can you imagine a, a middle school or elementary school student? You see that? The level of confusion and fear that comes over them? Tragic, man. They'll say she committed suicide. King Richard in the delicate dance of exalting a flawed black, black man. I want to you know what? What is the problem with it? You know, there's been so, like your Amanda Seals. Yeah. Attacking this movie. Attacking this movie. Why are y'all attacking this movie? They can always, this movie is about the father. Yeah. They can always come out and do a movie about Venus and Serena Williams. That may be the next thing that they venture off onto, but they chose to celebrate their father. Their father. And y'all have a problem with that. Well, in this movie, she in this article, opinion piece, she attacked the fact that they she said they made a uh, Richard looks Richard Williams look like a you know great honest perfect man and didn't show his flaws enough. We can't have a you uh, can't have a upstanding black not man. Not allowed to. You gotta now, show you gotta show the real black man. You gotta make sure you show all his. Oh, flaws. they want the Ike Ike yeah, want, Turner. That's it. They want Mister. They want Ike Turner. They don't want King Richard. Now, I wonder if I wonder if they decided to make a movie about their mother if they would have been getting this much pushback. No. They would have got celebrated. These people were writing an article saying finally the you mother. You can celebrate seen the matriarch, but you can't celebrate patriarch. the patriarch. No, sir. So she it's went sad. On, she went on this article and described him 
in a very negative way. How you know this man business? What's funny, what well, don't make sense, Venus and Serena were a part of the production. They chose to have this. They chose everything. They had a hand in this. So clearly they didn't want some things about their father being brought up in the movie. Maybe they were fine with how he's portrayed in this movie. They they view their fathers through their, <laughs> their eyes, eyes, not, not through, their, through their, mother. their mother's eyes or anybody else's eyes. And that's what the point she made in an article where he was great with the kids, but she was mad that they didn't talk about his relationship with the wife enough. Well, because this, this, the story is not about his relationship with the wife. The story is about his relationship with Venus and Serena Williams. It's yeah. not hard to understand. Yeah. I want to see the movie, though. I'm going to get around to seeing it. Damn, y'all going to start making me quote uh, uh, Dr. Umar Johnson. <laughs> you got to understand, to oh. understand, to overstand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right, man. I guess that's long enough. Voice getting kind of hoarse now. <laughs> but, yeah, we appreciate the support. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share. Tell us if you like the new uh, setup. Yeah, too. tell us if you like the new setup. You know, try to do something new. Um, hopefully, you enjoyed it. I'll pray. You want to say anything else? Anything else you want to say? No, nigga, I'm good. All right. Well, all right, man. Y'all be safe. All praise to the Most High. And peace, man.